my goodness, we're back at it again. It's Mr. Young. And it's foreign back in the building, Mr. Young. <laughs> Doing a bit of a recorded session because yes, life does get in the way. In fact, right, here's the thing. Originally, we thought we could take a break from WrestleMania weekend because, yeah. you know, there was just so much wrestling happening. We we're like, okay, bro, let's, let's just give ourselves a bit of a wrestling detox, right? Oh, yeah. my friend, how wrong we were. <laughs> bro, not forgetting oh. we... We recorded, okay, at least you recorded back-to-back -back episodes last week, right? Live. Right. And also you were streaming both nights of WrestleMania. I think you needed the break more than me. <laughs> I did. Legit, right? After we finished our podcast on two, uh, on Monday, yep. my throat, I was like, okay, you know, I cannot talk for the rest of the day already. I had to take a break because my voice was almost gone. Damn. You didn't go to work in the air on Monday night? Yes, I still went to work. I did what I had to do. Then after that was uh, Tuesday. And then thankfully Wednesday was uh, Hari Raya. Uh, Salam yeah. Hari Raya to you, belated by the way. Yeah, thanks brother. No, I've, be, hmm. I've been celebrating all the yes. way. Today is the first day I've pro had a proper break. Ah. Uh, as we're recording, this is Sunday, right? So yes. like, yeah, yeah. So uh, after the whole nonsense that happened with my laptop last oh, week. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. hold on. We need, okay, the 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 fans, the Discord, all the listeners of Kick to the Gut need to know what has happened to your laptop. Because the big drama, if, in case you didn't, you know, check out the podcast last week, you're like, hey, how come Mr. Young soloing the podcast on Monday, mm -hmm. right? Tell us, what happened on Monday? Okay, bro, I, I feel like I'm CM Punk and you're Ariel Helwani and you're asking me <laughs> how it all went down. How right? did it all go down, my friend? Yeah, I you know, I just, just choked a little bit. Like, just, just choked a little bit. <laughs> wow, something got choked out, all right? No, no, okay, okay. Let, let me take, give you full context. So, like, yeah, so Sunday, remember, we had an awesome uh, recording session at your place. Mm. And then we all agreed, we shook hands on it. We were like, okay, Monday, we'll watch WrestleMania Night 2 from, you know, comfort of our homes. And then we'll just get online. Yeah. And we're going to stream, like, how we usually do, do this format, right? Yep. This is, like, our every week format. And then when I woke up, I was like, you know what? I want to watch WrestleMania on a bigger screen. Let's watch it on my laptop. So, I switched on my laptop. Uh-huh. The power load. I can hear the tong. <laughs> the screen stayed black, bro. It never lighted up. I was like, oh. Wait, what? Now? <laughs> of now? all <laughs> days. Of all times. Bro, I will never forget. WrestleMania Night 2 is the day that my laptop, after buying it for only a year, and uh. not getting Apple Care warranty, unfortunately, it hey. just died on me, bro. And, and you were telling me, right, this is exactly one year, two months after the warranty. So, do you think, okay, conspiracy theory, everybody, tinfoil hats, everybody. Do you mm. think uh, they purposely make their products uh, after the warranty period, conk off? Uh, well, I shall not mention names. Okay, like, actually, I already said, like, I'm using a MacBook, right? It's but, MacBook, <laughs> la, MacBook. <laughs> yeah, cannot, cannot, cannot lie, but um, let's just say, you know, maybe streaming on MacBook may, may not be the best, the most optimized use of using a MacBook. Maybe I could have used a, uh, used a PC, maybe that mm. would help. But uh, yeah, I was clearly disappointed because, okay, first of all, two things was happening. We agreed to stream at 11 a.m., right? Yeah, After yeah. WrestleMania happened, right? Yeah. I was, I, was, I was, of course, wanting to watch WrestleMania, but I had to get a lot of things settled. I mean, first first of all, my plan was actually to go to the bank early that morning to, mm. to break up my money, lah, right? Yeah. To give all the, you know, high Raya money to all these little kiddos. And, mm. uh, you know, you know, it's not fun when you have to break out $300 into $2 notes, bro. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> freaking hell, you go to the ATM machine, uh, no $2, all gone already. By the time, two days before high Raya, everything sapu already. All the, yeah, all yeah. the old uncle, pakci, makci, all, we have it, taken out all the money, right? Yeah. So, I was so confident. I was like, you know, the moment the bank opened at 8, 8, 8 30 a.m., I was going to be right there, going to get my queue wow. number, going to settle everything, come home by 11 a.m., perfect timing. Wait, hang uh, on. So, the whole time you had your phone with you watching WrestleMania? Yes. Okay. Bro, so, the last thing I wanted was a, a, a laptop issue. Yeah. The last thing I wanted was to be at the bank and suddenly get my queue number and say, they tell me to come back two hours later. Oh, boy. Oh, <laughs> so, boy. all that shit went down. As, like, I was checking, uh, thank, thank God for our Discord, you know, could rely on you guys to, to yeah. kind of update me what's happening. You know, I, I saw you on Twitch as well. So, like, you guys were kind of keeping the ship going. Mm. But I was just dying. And, like, WrestleMania was, like, the third biggest priority of that morning, bro. Oh, my God. <laughs> and it was yeah. the craziest WrestleMania of all time. Did you manage to rewatch it, like, on your TV or something? Just to relive the emotions, bro? Yeah. So, so that's the funny thing, right? Like, for me, right? Uh, this is a crazy admission, but I have never watched back Elimination Chamber on WWE Network. Okay. Because I was there, right? Right, like, right, right. Like, I've experienced it. It was so taxing yep. in a way, right? And very funnily enough, right, I never rewatched back WrestleMania 2 from start to end. Uh. 
even until today, like it's been like a couple of days, right? Wow. Everything I've seen is like either social media, uh. watching reviews, uh, whether it's like Cornet, whether it's Bischoff, uh, bro, bro, clips. You you might have lost a bit of your wrestling fan cred by admitting Ooh. this. Are you sure this is something you want to admit, bro? Okay, I'll tell you what I did. <laughs> okay, go for it. I rewatched WrestleMania that very night. That's how great it was. And mm. this is on top of all the clips, all the review clips. Everyone doing a review, I would stay there and watch on TikTok. People reacting, I would watch. So I saw that see those scenes, I've seen like five, six, seven times. Plus, mm. I rewatched the entire, well, okay, not the entire pay per view. I skipped like LA Knight AJ Styles. I skipped oh, certain no. matches. Okay, I skipped okay. EO and Bailey because I already watched it live, ma, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I rewatched the first match, the Philly Street fight of all things because you know okay to be fair Snoop Dogg was quite funny la. Uh, and okay. the main event right nice nice no no, no I, I I clearly like know that it was one of the greatest WrestleMania's of all time people yeah. talking about the finish was great Um, what I enjoyed was actually watching the WrestleMania reactions whether mm. it's from people that was there live so I saw like this iPhone version of like the finish from yes. somebody who was from the third row mm. So they could see, like, I could literally see, like, Undertaker hobbling. He, he running away. Running, yeah, yeah. Running in, running out. Like, you know, I saw reactions. Like, you know, they had, like, a like a bar in New York. Yeah. Filming everyone's reaction, watching all the big things happening. Yeah. Like, I got a kick because I think that's the whole point, right? When you watch wrestling alone, it's fine. Yeah. But when you watch it as a community or you yeah. feel like you're part of a community reacting to the things that you react, yeah. wow, it's in- more incredible. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, that's the beauty of the social media age, right? Like, all of a sudden, you don't feel so disconnected anymore. You're not just sitting down watching by yourself. You're watching with, with this community and to see everybody's reaction. And we're all fans at the end of the day to share in this positive reaction. While there's a negative reaction in the wrestling world, we will we have all shared as well. It is kind of <laughs> crazy and we will get to in just a bit. The juxtaposition yeah. is kind of amazing. It's almost as if the universe planned this perfectly. The highest of the highs and well, not the lowest of the low. There have been lower, but just within this week of wrestling highs, Tony Khan had to slip in one. Nah, no, you think, you, you think people talking about that? I got something for you to talk about and we will get to that in just a bit. But before we do that, I want to say... Uh, Thank you so much for all our Patreons. Uh, Your beautiful names are on the scroller right there at the ticker. I want to say hello to everybody on our Discord. If you haven't followed us on Discord yet, uh, please do so. The conversation continues on Discord. And we want to shout out to our lovely sponsors, Mirage Advisory. They're bringing you kick to the gut. They are beautiful sponsors. Hey, they are the best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. Drop them a follow on Instagram, guys. Bro, not only that, man, mm. like, you know, we talk about how the WWE is in the new era. Yeah, yeah. Kick to the gut is also in the new era. We are in the Mirage Advisory era, bro. You know so, it. Thank you so very much. It's good to work with people who also love wrestling, who get what we're uh, putting down, as it were. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah. Uh, everybody, do us a favor. If you haven't already, go to Instagram right now. Look for Mirage Advisory. Drop them a follow. Okay. Yeah, drop, drop, drop them a follow and then drop, them me, follow. Yep. drop me into their comments and say, kick to the gut sent me or something yeah. lah. Yeah, for sure. And you know, you know, just like a lot of the casual fans or labs mm. fans, Mirage and Vajri, the boys there, they used to be fans growing up, Attitude Era, same like ah. me. And they were like, hey, I hear this WrestleMania 40 is like a big deal. You know, we mm-hmm. would love to support a community of wrestling fans. Uh, Dude. Tell us more about it, man. And yeah, they, they came through. They came and through. in the group chat too, they were reacting to the moments, the returns, the mm. Undertaker showing up, Rock, Cena. It was... Ah. It was, it was incredible. So once again, yeah, a yeah. shout-out to Mirage Advisory, our sponsors for this podcast. All right, yeah. let's talk about, you know, post-WrestleMania. You know, you had Triple H coming out talking about how they are scaling down the set for yeah. Raw and SmackDown. On the Raw right after, did you like the set? Um, I like how it feels like a more, how do you say, it? intimate, minimalistic set because the mm. whole point was for them to get more people into the audience, right? I love how he said, like, we want to show you the universe, the fans. Oh, you! I don't know if you noticed this, by the way. Mm. They're starting to call the WWE universe fans again. I don't mm. know if you noticed this. Like Fans, it's, yes. Pro wrestling. Like, yeah, they're saying pro wrestling. It's like they're going back to the whole, okay, let's not try to corporatize everything by calling yeah. this the WWE universe. Yeah, we'll throw that line out there. But it's actually okay to say fans. And, like, there are a lot of things that you just feel. 
right now as a wrestling fan. You feel like, really, it is a new era. Doesn't it yeah. feel like it? Like the Vince McMahon era, those of us who know, know. But for those who might not know, the inside staff who are not, quote-unquote, you know, smart mm -hmm. to the business and read dirt sheets, I wonder if to them it feels like the Attitude Era all over again or something fresh again. I heard something on TikTok. Apparently, a bunch of like the younger generation of wrestling fans mm. We were like, uh, I, I don't know what's the actual trend challenge or the hashtag, but they are like, we are sick of your attitude era, something like that. Like, like basically, this whole generation of younger fans are like putting out like a hashtag saying like, stop talking about attitude era. We are sick of it. We didn't <laughs> live through it. We want this era to be our thing now. So right. it's also, it's almost as if the younger fans are like trying to claim, want, wanting to claim ownership and like you know wanting to enjoy living in a era that is organic and happening mm. live. You know, so um. I, I I love that you know I, I as all, all of us older fans we, <laughs> we, we 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 they will never understand right how great yeah. attitude well, era was right see I I get it though I do get it like you know there are a group of fans that are always nostalgic always gonna be nostalgic it's you know what it is right it's yeah. the it's the nostalgia syndrome. Like, you know, I'm sure we all have parents or uncles or fathers, yeah. mothers, aunties who are like, oh, you know, um, Frank Sinatra is the best music. Uh, your Drake, uh, uh, what is this rubbish noise? Uh, what are your <laughs> rap music? You know, we've all like, you know, my, my own parents, right? Like they <laughs> love listening to Teresa Teng, for goodness sakes. You oh know? my God, I haven't that name in so long. Yeah, exactly, right? So that is the era they were brought up in and you uh, you have to understand that, but also at the same time too, like, enjoy everything that's out there that's new and different and i think we as you know what we do right people who have a voice in the quote-unquote wrestling world i think it's great that we can talk about the old stuff what worked in the old stuff we have mm -hmm. the context of what's happening now just, hey wait a minute i remember they did this in wrestlemania 3 or something like that i think it gives us a fuller picture but also at the yeah. same time it's like yeah let's enjoy what's happening right now let let papa h cook yeah, for sure. And, you know, I love the fans who, you know, didn't know anything about wrestling, mm. the younger fans, but they know who I Show Speed is. They know Logan Paul, right? <laughs> they, they, and they see and they consume their content through these people and their platforms. Yeah. And suddenly wrestling bleeds into their platform. They're like, oh, okay. Mm. Interesting. I'll check it out. I'll stay a couple of weeks. You never it's, know. We it's weird because I was listening to a lot of the reactions. Like, you know, like people like Jim Cornette, you don't expect them to know who Speed is, right? Oh, oh like, my God. The, the second <laughs> yeah. Speed showed up, like he, tore off the thing. I was like, speed! Because I'm in that space. I'm a streamer, so I know who the big streamers are, right? Yeah, yeah, So yeah. I you found it very amusing. I was like, hey, this boomer no speed. Like, don't play, play. Like. The funniest thing is, bro, <laughs> I saw some clips of Jim Cornette reacting to Mick Neal, talking about PDD, <laughs> talking about, you know, I show speed. Yeah. It's like a clash of both worlds, right? Mm -hmm. Um. And I think that's the beauty, beauty about wrestling because wrestling can be anything you want it to be. It's yeah, yeah. pop culture, right? Um, and, and, and back to your point about, you know, the raw sets. I feel like it reminded me a lot more of like UFC sets, right? Mm. Because UFC, they focus more on the walkout. They yep. talk about showing the fan. They want to talk about how crowded everything is. Yes. I like so that. So that was Triple H's point. He wanted to show the fans, right? More of mm -hmm. the people there. In my head, I was like, hmm... That's uh, also a good way of saying sell more tickets. Like, open up more space because there are gates, there are, you know, attendances are going up. So they're like, okay, yeah. la, we make the set smaller, we get more people in the door, we save costs, and we get more people to pay tickets. Best of both worlds, really. Bro, the business side of me was thinking like, wow, I can save money on Titan Throne and sets. Huh? And, and, and bring more people, more... put more <laughs> yeah. butts in seats. Exactly, bro. I was like, yeah, yeah okay. I see what yeah. you're doing. I see yeah. what you're doing. But, but I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to mm. lie. Uh, the Rock's entrance on Raw didn't hit as much <laughs> as when they had like freaking thunderbolts and yep. LED lights and so you know there's a give and take right because True. the Titan Trusts are iconic the entrances yep. are iconic so um uh, why not save on you know like maybe the normal Raws can mm. have this mm. and then go crazy with the pay per view yep. and the set yep. designs and the prop designs right I think um, they are in a really good spot to play around. Yes. And I'm sure they can project what attendance is for certain events as well. Yeah. So if a certain event, maybe not so full house, okay, lah, make the Titan Trump bigger. Lah. I'm sure it's all panels that they can construct within a yeah. few days, you know? Agreed, agreed. And uh, I also saw news that 
they also thinking of like dialing back on the AR, you know, in the entrances <laughs> because they were they were they were talking about how you know like maybe like Raw and SmackDown the normal shows they don't use the AR so much mm. so that when during the PLEs they can have that visual representation, uh, to make it a bigger deal to separate it from you know the the normal shows and I think that's a smart move, right? It is, it, bro. It is absolutely a smart move. It goes back to what we always talk about in terms of when in pro wrestling you don't give them a hundred percent all the time. Because yep. if not, then why do I want to watch the paid event? I've already yes. seen you do triple flips, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not just the moves, you know. Uh, get them one thing, you know, in terms of yeah. like the appearances. Don't yeah. debut everyone one shot in their mother in one night, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Spread no. it out. Spread right? it out. They understand the business of doing television, of putting yeah. butts in seats, of people, of getting people to talk and getting people to anticipate. Unlike a certain person we are about to talk to in just a little while. But before we get to that, okay. Yeah, um, let's clear all the WWE stuff before we deep dive. So, so uh, yeah. we are doing the good news, bad news thing. We do good news first, then the bad news. Huh? Okay, very good. Yeah, sure, um, sure, sure. What else from Raw? Okay, so there was the handshake. There's the whole debate of what did Rock give um, Cody Rhodes? Was it the mm-hmm. Rolex? Some people have speculated. Was it a bead from the Roman Reigns' necklace? You know, mm-hmm. that was another theory. But guess what? People are talking about it. Or they were for at least a day or two. Lah. Uh, yeah. No, uh, you know, I love all the theories. Uh, mm. I love some people were hitting that this might be something that Cody Rhodes had given to The Rock as a mm. way of like a handshake deal or like a verbal deal that to, to step aside, to let mm. The Rock go main event WrestleMania and the fact that he took it back and yep. The Rock giving it back, saying like, hey, you know, you broke your promise once, don't break mm. my heart again. Hey, bro, bro, bro. Mm. The, the thing is, when it happened, I was like, I actually feel very um, safe that they mm. will pay it off at some point. Maybe yes. not next week. Maybe not in a month. Maybe not even in a year. But I feel in the Triple H era, they will pay it off. If this were yeah. just three years ago, I'd be like, oh crap, we'll never buy it right now. Yeah, exactly. You, you know what? Did you have that same feeling? No, I love it. And you know what's the most heartening feeling about that night, right? Having mm. The Rock appear, having the Cody having that emotional speech. We are living in a time where yep. The Rock as the final boss is essentially the new Brock Lesnar, right? He can yes. be the guy that comes back in a half a year, yep. a year's time, and like be that final boss if you want to like win a championship or main event a show. The only difference is the Rock in the ring, uh, not quite Brock Lesnar. Like, he's all presentation at this point. Yeah, I mean he he's <laughs> I guess going down the Hogan route where it's all yep. rah rah, you yeah. know, you know, over the top. But hey, like um the rock the rock his life just keeps going, man. He got so yeah. much other shit to take care of. And I like that he closes the chapter mm. but then pour the seats like hey you know you might have finished your story with Roman Reigns but yeah. between you and me our story has just begun like whoa is this like the new Big Bad is this the new Kang yeah. bro Before. this is it is cinematic storytelling right they're like okay you know hey but but in the future ah, ah, don't play play ah. and talking about continuing the story anything else yes. from Raw you want to bring up because oh Smackdown I know okay let's talk about all the WWE stuff because technically yep. Dynamite happens before Smackdown but do you want to talk about SmackDown? Yeah, I think we should talk about it. I mean, other than how, like like overall, how would you say the Raw after Mania was this year? Overall? Um, I was excited. I love that they brought in Ilya and Roxanne Perez. Yeah, I think the the prop not say the problem lah, but the issue I had with it was it's like okay, I know these guys from the NXT setting. Here they yep. just felt like oh, insert new character, just give you a preview. Yep. They, the matches were nothing to shout home about. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Um, I yeah, I'm fine with them. Like mm. they, but I don't foresee them going on the roster full time because I think there's still a couple of threats they need to close yeah. in NXT. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I like you know Damian Priest coming out with the whole uh, presentation, Judgment yes. Day. Um, our truth, bro. Our truth. Our truth. Giving that six man tag and then bringing his friend that you can't see. Uh, yeah. I think that that was a great cameo, great usage of John Cena. I think John Cena had a great mm. uh, usage of him this weekend. Huh? Like, bro, you, know, you see his face. He's having fun. That's the yeah. thing. Like, he's sort of like that veteran who's like, oh yeah, people know me. They'll pop for me. I don't have to do too much work other than just do. You know, he's not involved in the way where he has to pro- uh, promo or anything. Like, he just shows up, does a few moves, and f's off. And he looks like he's having so much fun. Yeah, he's put in the time. He deserves it. I think he, he did, deserves yeah. to be beloved after all these years of mixed reactions, mm. you know, crowd shitting on him. It's, it's great. Um, I, I like Damien as champion. I yeah. want to see him grow into that role. Yeah. Um, 
and I also love everything that was between Drew McIntyre and CM Punk. Oh Park. my god! Oh dear god! Like, I I know the news channel that the news cycle have like passed by and people might have forgotten Still. about Raw, but that was a that was a great moment. Uh, <laughs> Drew, yeah. Do, do, so okay, so. Talking about self-inflicted wounds, right? It's like Drew McIntyre, you know, he wins, he finally gets his moment, but he has to ruin it because of his obsession. So the whole thread of obsessions coming back to bite you in the ass was the thread of WrestleMania, or one of the main themes. You know, you had it with Roman Reigns, like hitting Seth instead of hitting Cody with the chair, you know, to wrap up that storyline, but he couldn't get over his own obsession, right? So that was that story. And then there was Drew's obsession with CM Punk. Like instead of savoring his win and effing off, he had to get in CM Punk's face and that's what cost him, right? So I love that these these, these storytellers Telling themes are abound now in the yeah. WWE. It gives us like overthinkers so much to do. It's yeah. awesome, right? Yeah, so much to sing into, right? Yeah. Uh, and, oh, and, but but and, I have to say, CM Punk's face when he does like what he does to Drew and he's cost him the second time and he has this shit what they call the shit eating grin. Yes, yes. I, I love, love it, man. And uh, I'm sorry, I'm gushing a little bit. But I'm, I under, I get I get your love for CM Punk now. Whenever I go through comment sections like in on TikTok and people are still like, I don't understand CM Punk, I don't get CM Punk. Go and watch his stuff. Like, you know the WWE, they literally have playlists. They will stream live playlists, right? Yep. Like yep. Best of John Cena. I, I I went down a rabbit hole the other day. Like CM Punk's best moments on the mic. It was mm. like an hour and 20 minutes of his promos. I yeah. was like, God dang, I get, I understand why people like him now. Yeah, and, and it's like, you know, people can talk all the shit about him being controversial, mm. problematic, cancer in the locker room, blah, 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 not as great as a uh, wrestler as he thinks he is, old <laughs> past, whatever it is, but nobody can touch him on the mic and that nope. can last, like Bobby Heenan, that can last all the way until his retirement, bro. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you no, know? exactly. So he can move on to be a commentator, then after that, a manager, he's yeah. got a steady paycheck, la, is yeah, what he and, has. And, and, you know, a lot of people were arguing, like, whether, you know, it's unfair on Drew McIntyre mm. for taking away his moment. But I would argue it's actually the perfect use of Drew McIntyre because Drew McIntyre only wanted one thing, to celebrate a title yes. win in front of a crowd. Yeah. that's He got that he, for five minutes, but he did get that. Mm. And then the, on the flip side of it, he loses the title, but now he has a year's worth of storyline, a rivalry that's going to cook on Raw between CM Punk and... Drew McIntyre, how amazing is that? That's exactly it. So now he gets to make money, draw, put butts in seats. If that is not, like, you know, one thing going back to what CM Punk said on Errol Hawani, right? If you haven't watched yeah. that interview, it's a fantastic interview. But if your game is to put on five star matches to half empty arenas, then it's not, you're not playing the same game as he. He, he, being back in WWE makes so much sense because WWE is in the business of putting butts yep. in seats, selling tickets and, you know, breaking records. Yeah, what yeah. better yeah. way to do it than, you know, controversial moments like these with Drew. And I'm sure Drew is smart enough to understand that, you know, this will benefit him in the long term as well. Yeah, the version of WWE that Punk left wasn't a good fit. Nope. We agree, right? It was yeah. too constricting for him. Yeah. The version of AEW with too much freedom and too much, you know, uh, immature people also is not yeah. a great, a, a good environment for him because he yeah. tries to lead, no one will listen. Mm. I think this generation where you know in WWE where yeah. all the younger stars are willing to listen as a structure is perfect for him. Mm. And with Drew McIntyre, like we all love him as the professional hater, right? Yeah. <laughs> so it, it in a way. Going. Yeah. In a way, isn't Drew McIntyre AEW? Like, in a sort of weird way, like, he's portraying that whole class of fan right now, isn't he? Yeah, but he's like the... Basically, if AEW fans are like the nerds that, e, I hate you, CM Punk, e, e, like a very kental kind of boys, right? Yeah. And then, like, Drew McIntyre is like the big bully that is like yeah. standing up for all his nerdy friends and like yeah. shitting on CM Punk. <laughs> Uh, it's like all these nerdy fans can go be a uh, Drew McIntyre. Yeah, yeah, what he said, what he said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what he said. Oh, yeah. shit. Yeah, and, and then we are in, almost forgetting the fact that the winner of the number one contendership for oh, yeah. Damien Priest's title, Jey Uso, the main event Jey Uso is really yeah. the main event again. So, so yeah, they are not just like giving him, you know, a moment. They are giving him several moments, right? Like, I mean, okay, to be fair, I don't think he's going to win. Yep, you know, yep. it's too early in the run, but there's definitely stories to be told, right? Correct. And wins and losses matter, as Paul Heyman said. So the oh. winner of a grudge match between Jay and Jimmy, it makes sense that Jay would now elevate to a new, uh, you know, stratosphere. 
And poor last, Jimmy. Poor yeah. Jimmy. Can we talk about SmackDown now? Okay, last thing, last thing about ah. Raw. Okay, okay. I love the fact that Gunther and Seth Rollins wasn't on the show. Yeah, yeah. I Agreed. They needed to take a break, first of all. And there were just too many stories being told. It's fine. Yes. Let it drag out a bit. It, uh, okay, if this were AEW and Gunther disappears for five weeks, uh, then there's a problem already. You know? Correct, correct, you, you correct. Know, you know, but I think I trust in Papa H to bring back Gunther at the right opportune moment. If, even when Gunther is away, you know, mm. they continue the storyline between Vinci, Kaiser and Sami Zayn. Yes. And now, Sami Zayn can go have that feud with Chad Gable yeah. next week, Montreal. Mm. And imagine, okay, if Chad Gable wins, yes, fine, Sami Zayn transitional champion. But if Chad Gable loses, what if it pushes him into the dark side? He yeah. becomes a heel. Yeah. How awesome will that feud be? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, just so many things to look forward to. So yeah, this yes, new quote unquote new era, we are all very hyped for it. Let's talk about SmackDown now. What happened on SmackDown? Obviously, the big talking point, right? The uh-huh. uh, fallout from WrestleMania. I, and we are very much in the fallout from WrestleMania few weeks. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it, it, it feels like a, uh, that sort of a moment where, yeah, who is Cody's next challenger going to be? Do we really like need to rush into that? I don't think so. Let them have a bit of time to cook. Right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yes, so we had that whole moment where Solo steps up. So, okay. I don't know if he, like, the internet seems to think that he implied that he is the tribal chief. At first, uh, I thought he implied that The Rock was the tribal chief. I don't know. Well, what do you the, think? What do you think? To me, right, it's pretty straightforward. It's pretty clear, right? Like, mm. um, when Paul Heyman said, like, you know, winning and losing has its consequences, but. Yep. He said something very interesting, like a phoenix rising from the edges. He was just go about to go on a whole diatribe monologue about Roman Reigns. Immediately, Solo cuts him off. He's like, nope, no, he's not going to come back. He's like, so, he, so okay, he he does the whole thing in the ring as well, right? Yeah. With Jimmy and then talking about like, you know, Jimmy lost, he hugs him, I'm your brother. Okay, Solo is no Roman, right? Yep. But you got to yep. give him props to, that he tried. And then- You know what, you uh, know what it is? You know what, what? it is? What, what, this what? is Triple H- Post WrestleMania 14, Shawn Michael go away. Now I have the ball. I'm gonna take over the ball right now. The ball is in my court. Remember yeah. that promo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's like like Triple H where he was at a point still a mid cutter. Mm. Now he's stepping up. So Solo is gonna be like so called <laughs> the figurehead of this new scenario, new group. So yep. yeah, talk about talk about that. Uh, yeah, so debut. yeah, he hugs Jay. Uh, no, 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 Jimmy Uso, right? So oh, I'm your uh, you're my brother. I love you. And then. Boom. From behind, it's Tamatonga. Yeah. yeah. Who looks incredible, by the way. I forget that, you know. Um, Boy, he's jacked. Yeah, he is jacked, right? So, he's the son of Haku, which is interesting. I think you shared it and a lot of people have been sharing the fact that, you know, Rikishi and Haku, then they show side by side Solo and Tamatonga. Yeah, yeah. And, and another interesting fact about that is like Tamatonga and Tonga Loa back mm. in New Japan was Gorilla uh, of Destiny, which is G.O.D. was part of Bullet Club. Yeah. So there is, and G.O.D. was tag team champions in New Japan while Cody was like the leader of Bullet Club. Mm. There's a lot of links there. Yeah. Um, and another thing a lot of people uh, might have forgotten that Jacob Fatu from MLW has just signed with WWE. Correct. Jacob Fatu, Fatu is the son of, uh, I can't remember, uh, his name is Tamu. Okay. Uh, I'm not remember. I'm not sure what his the dad's name is, but basically the dad and Haku were called the Islanders in the 80s. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, so right, there's a lot of links with the family. They all yeah. make sense that they're all together. So, <laughs> bro, it's like wow, the whole family come together. And so, okay, so the idea here here is right, and people have been speculating. You bring in Jacob Fatu at a future point in time. You know, you don't mm-hmm. debut him now. Don't need to rush anything. Did anybody even like have an inkling that Tamatonga was joining WWE? By the way. Because I heard uh, no news about that. Well, Tang, uh, Tamatonga did announce uh, in back in February that his uh, contract with New Japan was ending. So ah. we knew that he was in free agency mode. Ah. Uh, probably there was some rumblings that he had signed, but it wasn't confirmed, right? Yeah. Uh, my only concern is that, you know, we are wrestling fans who do the work in terms of understanding New Japan and all that. Mm. But the casuals will probably be like, no. who is this new Samoan? <laughs> so, so I no. do hope they tell yeah. the story or introduce him properly in a package first. Yeah, I, I, I don't worry. I don't worry. It's WWE. They are not, you know, they are not like AEW that expect you to know, 
right? Yep, yep, so yep. they will somehow tell this story, maybe do backstage interviews, footage, whatever it is. But yes, for now, we got the shocking debut of this. And the guy immediately looks like, you know what I mean? Uh, like he debuts, he looks freaking jacked to the gills. You're like, oh my God, immediate impressions. First Correct. impressions count. Great and he, first impression, yeah. yeah. He came in, beat down Jimmy Uso. So um, the what people are speculating, uh, it's like the new blood, uh, bloodline versus the OG bloodline at some point. So you got Roman Reigns, Jimmy and Jay back together, reunion, maybe even Sami Zayn, you know, at Survivor Series versus the new bloodline, which could be um, The Rock, uh, mm -hmm. Solo Sokoa, Jimmy, uh, Tamatonga and Jacob Fatu. Yeah, and, and they really planted the seeds because clearly from Paul Heyman's reaction is he wasn't aware of this betrayal or he mm. wasn't aware of this thing that's going down. Mm -hmm. And if you remember on SmackDown backstage, right, when like I, I think she, they were checking up on Jimmy and yep. then the reporter asked like, uh, how's Jimmy's situation? Are you aware of this? Suddenly, uh, Tamatoga comes into the frame yep. and he was looking at him and he said, by the orders of the tribal chief. Yeah. But do you get that? Who, who, who is this tribal chief? Who are they yes. talking about? Yeah, Which so, tribal chief are they taking yeah. orders from? That's are you talking video. about Rock? Solo? Or Roman Reigns, we don't know. So that is the big quote unquote mystery. So yeah. there's apparently on SmackDown, there's gonna be this whole like, who is the new bloodline tribal chief? Bro, bro? I tell you, power depending, struggle. Depending on the amount of family members they have, right? I think this <laughs> bloodline chapter bro, can be like the days of our life. I think it can go on for the next decade, bro. <laughs> bro, bro, then you know what needs to happen, right? What, then bro? Bloodline can feud with the Latinos. Oh. <laughs> because LW also got growing and then they have factions so LW versus uh, fan, uh, Legado del Fantasma bro you've been wanting to have like a Mexican telenovela all this while right yeah, yeah. got one corner of the WWE universe all the Mexican telenovela <laughs> no. happening over there but but got no romantic um, you know storyline that time That's Buddy weird. Murphy and Aaliyah Mysterio uh, then got love triangle or uh, the love story or this uh, this I one just fight you, fight only I tell you Dominic will fall for Zelina Vega oh, or like God. Electra Lopez then Ria uh, not happy for all so Excuse me, Sorry, are what? you suggesting he breaks up with mommy? How dare you? Uh, I mean, he's a dirty dom, bro. He can't <laughs> help himself. <He> can't <laughs> help himself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the girls like the uh, you know the bad boys, right? Mm. Yeah, it, 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 there was this one quote I think the dom said in an interview. Like somebody was asking, "Will you ever wear the mask full time? Take over real materials mental?" And yeah. then he said. Nah, I'm too good looking. Oh, I'm too, I'm too good looking. So, he, bro, not only was it a perfect heel response, I agree, bro. I think he's quite good looking, bro. I think he yeah. shouldn't wear the mask. Right. <laughs> okay, sure, sure. I yeah, yeah. I wonder if down the road there's some sort of redemption angle for him. But okay, never mind. Yeah. It's just me pondering things. So there you go. That's SmackDown. Um, to be oh, fair, wait, that bro, huh? wait, there, there was a couple of things I want to talk to you about SmackDown as well. Okay, bro. okay, okay. I know it's only been a week in, but how do you feel about? Cody Rhodes, like, you know, promos on Raw and SmackDown. And people, I think our wrestling fans are so fickle already. I really see on the comment section, people are saying that, oh, this is boring. I want Roman again. <sighs> yeah. Nothing already. Do you it's see just, it? yes, yes. Pe but people are just being people. You know, I'm fine. He's taking a victory lap at this point, you know? Yeah. Yes, it'll probably, to be honest, it'll probably get annoying after a while but I'm fully aware or I think that Triple H is fully aware of this and he knows better than to book him in to weird spots like that so yeah, yeah. At, at this point really in Papa H I trust yeah we've seen it happen before in AEW right when he so called eloquent rambling yeah. monologues yeah. became you know tiresome to that fan yeah. but in WWE like how are you gonna keep that style of promo fixated now that he has finished his story like yeah. they need to figure out very soon yeah. how we're gonna book a baby face champion right but but once again too like that style of promo works in the wwe because i mean mm. you know say what you want it's a very corporate very proper professional audience that they, yeah. they expect that sort of thing out of the wwe right whereas yeah. in the aew they are a bunch of you know jaded we hate the establishment fans i mean let's call a spade a spade right the whole genesis of aew was we want an alternative we hate the evil corporation and we want um you know something different something a little bit more outlaw and cody is the exact opposite of that he is a company man through mm. and through so maybe he was miscasted as the rebellion's leader in a way that's what i yeah. say yeah 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 I'm, I'm i'm i agree with that i tend to agree so my concern and what i'm interested is looking uh, at in terms of like the way they book Cody as a champion, mm. how is, is he gonna sustain that baby face Bro. interest in him? It's been a year? week. 
It's been a week, bro. You're becoming one of those. No, let, no, no. I, let I'm him not cook. Saying, I'm not saying I'm the guy. I'm <laughs> yeah, just yeah. saying I'm curious to see. I know, you know? I know, I know. I, I want to see, yeah. <laughs> let, uh, let, let Papa Ish cook. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so number one contender for Cody Rhodes' title. They mm. booked two triple threat matches. Yes. Uh, LA Knight won the first one. AJ Styles won the second one. Clearly, this is going to be a way for AJ Styles to get his victory back, right? Oh, what, what do you mean get his victory back? As in... Well, because LA Knight beat him on at WrestleMania. Oh, oh so right? uh, so during the, quote-unquote, the finals of this uh, tournament? Yeah, la. yeah. New she's mm. this coming week SmackDown. I, I feel like Babyface versus Babyface, LA Knight and Cody Rhodes, I think a bit too soon, right? A bit. Right? Uh, you're, you're right. You're absolutely right. They could make it work, but why? Just make it simple. You got heel yeah. versus... Uh, baby face. It's not a main event that I'm very excited to see, to be honest. Yeah. But I mean, they, need, they need something for backlash, a B pay per view, yeah. right? Yeah, it's side quest boss, lah. We all know side quest boss. Yeah, yeah. But I'm very intrigued because he mentioned NWA in his promo, Cody Rhodes did. Mm. So I would love to see some Bullet Club references being mentioned. I would love to see, you know, AJ Styles really leaning, going back to that main event level. So, mm. uh, I don't hate it because jacked up AJ Styles hits different anyway. So. Yeah. And, and plus, they are in a really nice position right now that the World Heavyweight Championship on Raw side also has a very exciting um, possibilities, right? Yes, yes, So, yes. it's fine. Yeah. But my, la- my last question then will... The WWE draft, which is supposedly happening uh, at the end of this month, mm-hmm. will it fuck up the things or will it help, you know, give the kind of fresh blood that people I, are wanting? I right? think it can only give fresh blood. Like right now, what's happening is they are dealing with the fallout. So they're clearing up some stuff, maybe wrapping up some storylines, starting the thread of new storylines, right? And mm. then once the draft hits, ah, now you can full ball on whatever you have planned. So, yeah, mm. you just give it time and just enjoy the ride. I think we are in a really good spot as a pro wrestling fan right now, you know? Yep. I agree. I agree. So, yeah, um, generally, I'm happy with the fallout from uh, WWE. And I feel the momentum will continue. The, another chapter has begun with the bloodline. Yes. Cody Rhodes is settling into his new role. Um, yeah, we shall see what, what stories WWE mm. will tell in the next month ahead. And, I mean, let's be real, right? Along the way, we will have episodes that just feel like filler episodes. You know, mm. that, that, yeah. that was the big thing. Like, you know, uh, in the lead up to WrestleMania even, there were episodes of Raw and SmackDown that felt like, oh, they just go out there just to string us along a little bit more. But then yeah. we all enjoyed the payoff, did we not? Yeah, we, we all did. forgot about those weeks already. So it's bound to happen. Like people on the in- that, that's the thing about comments on the internet. People just mm-hmm. say whatever in the moment. Oh, boring idea. We the one thing. <laughs> it's like, but then they were probably very happy when Cody won, you know? So it's just this is just commenters being commenters. No need Bro, to look too much thing, into that. Group thing. You know, I I I, mm. I respect, you know, some of our Discord members, people like Gaddafi, uh Najwan, people who still watch AEW and sure. are, are fans of New Japan because they love what they love, right? And, yeah, yeah. And, nothing and wrong may- with that. There was a point when man, that might be the majority to support AEW, and mm. right now it's not as cool. But if you enjoy a style of wrestling and that's what you love, like no one can take that away from you. No one can accuse you of like oh switching sides just because it's convenient, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Right? But that being said, though, it is really like you are running a different business. Hmm. I, you notice the entire mood changed the second uh, we pivoted. You it's are, your voice, la, Your voice it's is my good. voice. Oh, thank yeah. you, thank you. Okay, so here's the thing. Last week, I went out on a limb. Just, just to give context to this, right? I went out on a limb and I said, <laughs> when they announced that, uh, they being the Young Bucks, when they announced that they were going to air the All In London footage, I said, this is going to be a, a bait and switch. It's going to be some stupid skit by the Young Bucks. They're going to hee hee ha ha, do it for the laughs, do it for a ratings pop, whatever. Nope, I was wrong. And therefore, as a man of my <laughs> word, I shall watch AEW Dynamite from start to finish. For an entire month. Just Dynamite. Don't. I'm not going to do Rampage or Collision, please. But Dynamite, yes. I And I started uh. with this week's Dynamite. Because I saw the footage on social media first. And then mm. I was like, ah. Oh. I literally said, oh, <laughs> oh shit. <F. laughs> now I have to watch Dynamite for a month. Bro, Which, okay. Some, mm. Yeah. Some of the listeners were like DMing me, DMing me and saying like, 
Hey, so that means Yang will watch for a year, right? And I'm like, <laughs> <"That> who the? <laughs> no, I don't know who came up with this, you know? Like, people uh, in my chat were like, so you're watching for, I think uh, Sir Who's came into my TikTok uh, uh, live stream one time, say, hey, you watch a year, I'm like, hey, bro, one month, I said month, okay? Go back and watch the episode, I said month, not a year. Okay, okay. Let, let, let's set the parameters, right? Okay, so <laughs> Mr. Yang is going to be watching Dynamite for all of April. Let's, let's, let's cap it at April, okay? Ha, so wow, so the... good, a one, two, three. Okay, la. so you so got your uh, 10th, 17, 24th, and 1st of May, Ken. Okay, settle. Four episodes, then you can give us a very objective <sighs> review. Because I, even I don't watch Dynamite for start to finish, bro. So okay. I'm very excited to hear I, your thoughts. I will admit this right now, right? Okay, go for that it. That when you don't watch a product and you are so far removed from the product, it's a lot easier to criticize. I will mm. say that, right? Okay. So now that I've actually watched... I have a better understanding of what is going on. And I will say that uh, I feel bad for the people who are there who are genuinely trying to make this damn thing work. Okay. Because can, can, uh, can you give me like a review of Dynamite since the all-in stuff? We'll talk about that later okay. to wrap up. But tell me like from start to finish, like your thoughts on each match, the flow of the, the show, all that. The, the, I, I feel like the same problems exist in that A, it okay, and I know, we're not supposed to compare. But this seems like a dated presentation. At this point, with everything that's so fresh in the WWE right now, mm. camera angles, presentation, even though that Dynamite just re uh, just spruced up their look and everything, it feels like an old WWE presentation. So that's the first thing that I immediately noticed. Like, oh, this is like I'm being taken back to, you know, like Vince McMahon era of uh, WWE, which is not a good thing, right? Which is, isn't that ironic? Because when... AEW first came out, everything about it felt so real. And, yes. You know, the presentation fresh. was fresh. Yeah. Right? So, it's... Well, WWE just took this major step up. And mm. AEW just brought in some of the production stuff that used to work at WWE. So, it makes sense that suddenly their presentation is starting to look like that old WWE style. Doesn't it? Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay, okay. Cool. Yeah. So, there's that. And then... I see what they're doing with certain things because they kicked off the night with like the whole interaction between Swerve and... Uh, no, not Swerve, sorry. Uh, Swerve, Samoa, Samoa Joe, Joe, right? right? Yeah. Because there was going to be a main event, blah, blah, blah. So I get it. Yeah, they're trying to generate hype for the main event. So it's like the poor man's version of WrestleMania's main event. La. <laughs> you got a Joe yeah. versus a Rhodes. Right, random, right? Dusty Rhodes all of a sudden. <laughs> but uh, you know they did it on purpose. Joe versus a Rhodes. Of course, of course. But like, uh, so I, I believe Samoa Joe and Justin Rose were supposed to start off the night, the yes. match itself. Uh, the, the idea of them sort of postponing the match because Swerve came in and disturbed, disturbed. I get why they're doing it, but it seems kind of dumb, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, not to take away from the fact that Swerve is super over. My God. He's okay, their most over guy. Okay, so Swerve's reaction is great. Mm. Is he still a heel or is he like a full-blown baby thing? What is he now? So... He's a heel that did dastardly things, but people that audience liked it so much that now he's forced to be a face, but still... A, uh, how, a how do tweener? I put it? An anti-hero? Tweener? No, he's or definitely a face. He's defi they're definitely making him play into it, but he still does like, you know, heelish things like, you know, using the chain and everything. It's kind of like Stone Cold if you think about it. Like okay. he can do no wrong. Right? Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, gotcha. And, and, and like the crowd is solidly behind that. That's the yeah. top guy right now at this yeah, point. Yeah, it is, yeah. it is. Well, and the thing is, people are behind Samoa Joe also. They, they, you know? So isn't this technically a very uh, a compelling main event feud? Because there are two over guys that the audience in AEW loves, right? It is, it is. And I don't know about the presentation before, but... I don't know. I think it might be just a presentation thing. It's not something that has been elevated to that point. You know, we just, mm. like I said, I've, you have to think about it in context of what is going on. And what has been going on is completely cast a gigantic shadow over this. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it just can't help. Like a, like a B show main event feud. Lah, like, yeah. Like, you know. Yeah, okay. it does. But once again, nothing wrong if you enjoy this stuff, right? Um... Uh, let me just very quickly go through the other matches. So you had Anna Jay versus Mariah May. I mean, the match was like, eh. But the post-match stuff with the HLA, like, what is this? What What is this? <laughs> if we are back in 20, 2002, is it? Okay, so, once again, do you expect me to know who this lady is? I know on commentary, they said that she was tech teaming with Mariah May in Stardom it's, or something like that. La. It's the Japanese girl, right? Mina? Mina, yeah. And then she came out, did... 
the, the celebration with champagne glasses. I don't know what the context of that is. And then she kissed her. And then the crowd's like, of course they chill out because, you know, HLA. But I'm like, it's, it just felt like a cheap ratings grab. Everything about this episode felt like a cheap ratings grab. But got you, got you, okay. Funnily enough, this was not the most egregious of the night. Okay, okay. okay. Um, we all know that- which is the worst. Yeah, we all know that, right? Um, wasn't there Adam Copeland segment? So Adam Copeland versus yeah. Penta was the first match. Oh, and okay, okay. Like first proper match, match lah. Like, after the whole you know schmoz uh, at the start, and like I don't know what to say about Penta because we all know he is athletic. He is um, uh, very, very, very well loved. It's a mm. face versus face match. It's like the op- the the TNT Copeland Open oh. Challenge, whatever they want to call it lah. Cope open, right? Cope, Cope open, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, I was never a fan of the John Cena US Open Challenge because half the time, uh-huh. you know who's going to win. It's a glorified, not you know, it's like, okay, some guy's going to challenge, they're going to have a halfway decent match, and that's it. Technically, there are no stakes because we know that Copeland or we know that John Cena's not going to freaking lose, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Except for the one time, remember, um, Kevin Owens came out. That was a pretty cool moment. Yeah, when Don't, Kevin Owens, uh, I'm talking about Kevin Owens, the NXT champion, challenged the US him. champion. Do you remember this? Yes, of course. And then yeah. he beat uh John Cena, yeah. right, and shocked everyone. No, um, to me the format works only if two things, right? Like Adam Copeland does highlight the newer stars mm. or the stars that that they want to push to get over, or like it leads to again what you say, like a shock upset victory, yep. and it pushes you know a new star. But Penta has been there for a while. He hasn't been established as anything more than a tag team wrestler. Dude, exactly. Right? No, dude, exactly. I'm like, oh, it's Penta. Like, <laughs> everything that he did with Edge, though impressive, athletic, there's nothing I haven't seen before. Eh? Like, you know what I mean? So it's not like he highlighted a new wrestler, showed me the grit of this new young boy or whatever. It's like, oh, it's the same old shit. You, you know, so I felt nothing from that match. Not taking away from the match that it was an exciting, it was a fun match. Once again, doing the Cero Mero thing, which he overdoes, I swear, you know. Okay. Like, but, but whatever. But, but what about Adam Copeland doing this style of wrestling? Is, is he showing something new? Is that what he's trying to show? That he can hang in this style? I think so. It's like Daniel Bryan. It's like Sting almost. You know, it's mm. like he's trying to show these young guys that I'm still, I'm cool. I can still hang with you. To me... I feel like Edge shouldn't be in that position. He should be in that position where he can come out, punch, kick, and leave. Th- does mm. that make sense? Yeah, of course, of course. Like, that's why the Chris Jericho, you know, was so watered down because oh, he God, tried don't... to do too much, right? Right, um, so... bro, bro. We are gonna talk. We are gonna talk about Chris Jericho. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Let, um, let, let me let, let me put a bow on Adam Copeland first, right? Like, okay, I I didn't hate the yeah. match. Okay, but I think it served no purpose. So that leads me to my next question. Do you think Adam Copeland telling everyone that I just go to EW so I can fight all these dream matches that I want, mm. does it make sense storyline-wise? What, what do you mean? Story, like in his own head or in AEW's narrative? Like I don't understand. What no, so what, what, what I mean is like, you know, does it make sense when, an, when a wrestler comes to a promotion and says that I want to go to your promotion so I can have all these dream matches with all these different people. I can't wait to work and touch hands with all these people. Yeah. But... So what? That's just a a, a a series of exhibition matches. What? Yeah, la. no, no, that's exactly it. It's ex- You go back to what CM Punk said. I am preaching the CM Punk gospel right now. Oh, well, you're a follower. I'm a follower. Yeah. I'm a cult of, uh, what about, uh, what's that? The Straight Edge Society. There you go. No, um, going back to what he said, right? If your idea of doing great work is wrestling with your friends, making a shit ton of money doing it because of uh, what's-his-face, but wrestling to a half-empty or, you know, three-quarters empty stadium, then good for you. But it's not their business, you know? It's not WWE, it's not CM Punk's business. So who are we to say that Edge is not doing the right thing? He's doing the right thing for himself, he gets to hang out with his friends, work with the people he wants to work with, but it's all fun and games, and that's the point. I think is that you know AEW is in a different business. It, they are in the indie. Let's have fun while we can because this guy is paying us a shit ton of money. Mode. You know, I want to say something that might be a controversial take, mm-hmm. but you know, we all love Edge. We respect his story. You know, yep. everything with his retirement coming, all that kind of stuff. But there is a reason why he was always one A to John Cena. He, 
Bro. And now being Bro. in a promotion where he's supposedly the top guy, yeah. it just proves the fact that yeah. he is not the draw on the level of all these number who top star of the generation. And there is not absolutely nothing wrong with that. He played his role in the WWE. They didn't have anything for him anymore. He wanted to do more. They were like, okay, we think that you are tapped out already. Mm. And I think, mm. you know, like you look at Rey Mysterio at this point right now, right? It's kind of yeah. like, oh, okay, it's Rey Law. Whereas, you know, when Rey came back, it was a big deal. Now it's like, oh, it's Rey again. <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. They didn't want Adam to or Edge to overstay his welcome. So he was yeah. like, oh, screw it. I'll just go the other side. And he's making the money. He's doing what he wants to do. So more power to him. It's just that it's not going to, ha- it's not helping AEW's business, actual e- business. Correct, correct. Unless mm. they book him like Sting, which yep. I think he would have made him a bigger deal. Yes. Mm. Uh, but he, he didn't because, you know, AEW has now proven themselves a track record of misusing uh, their stars. Because you don't have a proper leader. And we'll get to that in just a bit, right? But like, you know, it's like sometimes you have to protect the workers, your talent from themselves. Yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah, they, they want to wrestle every week because it's their joy and love. But sometimes you have to tell them, okay, no, we need to hold back a bit. So anyway, it is what it is. Um, you got the energy Mariah May match with the lesbian kids. Okay, great, whatever, you know. Um, speaking of holding back, uh, ah. uh, are they holding back Mercedes Monet? Because I haven't seen her do anything other than just talk only. <laughs> <laughs> so there was a promo, backstage promo. Somebody beat her up, right? And then it was like, oh, who beat her up? Because the lights went out. Uh, it's kind of lame. Anyway, okay. yeah. Huh? So that means they didn't feature her at all in front of the, in the ring? At all, no. nothing? No, no. They Just are, backstage. Well, I, I I don't know. Maybe somebody told her, uh, Tony Khan, like, yeah, you know, she should not, you should limit her appearances. And then so he was like, okay, we'll just put her in talking appearances where she's not, you know, going to be showcasing her full strength. I'm bored she's- already. She's not a roadie pie, but she can't talk people into the arena. Like. No. No, bro, I'm bored. And I hate to say it, but like, you know, like I'm not interested in what she has going on coming up at Dynasty based on what I've seen bro, so but far. She's, there's nothing going on for her in Dynasty because she said she will only wrestle her first match at double or nothing, oh, right? Yeah, exactly. So it's Who like, wants so, to wait? Yeah. And it's not like she's so entertaining on the mic that you want to die to see her. I guess the whole storyline now is who attacked her. So that's, you know, what they're going for lah. This is like WWE SmackDown vs. Raw storyline on no, season see, mode. But, but you get what I'm saying when if gotcha. the, this entire presentation feels like old WWE, which, you know, they were railing against. That yeah. was the whole foundation they were built on. We are anti-WWE. We are sports-based presentation. Now look who is actually doing the sports-based presentation. It's kind of yeah. mad if you think about it. So technically, their mission statement their so-called thesis on what will make wrestling successful, it's not wrong, right? Sports-based mm. presentation, no, making it realistic is what would have made you a big deal. Yep. But they just couldn't execute it. No, they couldn't execute it because they didn't have the right people and the at the end of the day, there's only one person to blame here mm. and he might disconnect our internet so we better, you know, watch okay, what we yeah, say. Yeah, okay. But <laughs> the buck stops, <laughs> pun not intended, the buck stops at the top of that. You know, the food chain. The guy making yeah. the decision, saying yes and no. We'll get to him in just a bit. But um, you had Lion Hook and Katsuyori Shibata versus mm-hmm. Shane Taylor Promotions. First of all, I don't know who the hell Shane Taylor Promotions is. They look like yeah. generic bad guys. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, with, with some sort of hip-hop slant. Okay, fine, whatever. I love Shibata's uh, Google Translate thing. I think it's quite funny, honestly. Okay. You know? yeah. yeah. And then they're doing this whole, oh my God, Chris Jericho is like trying to mentor Hope, right? And then he's obviously playing off a, a bit of an arrogant mentor. Like, just listen to me, you know, forget about all this game plan, blah, blah, just listen to me. It's, it's super, he's like the cringe lord of AEW right now. Like, every time he does his thing, I cr- like, oh, what are you doing? It's so cringe. Bro, you know, he just copyrighted uh, Learning Tree as one of his copyrights, one of his trademarks. <laughs> he can't help himself, bro. You need to trademark everything, like, bro. Now, so now I'm starting to see, right? Like having someone like, you know, obviously we hate what Vince did, but having sort of somebody to say, no, that's a not a great idea. Let's go with something else. Like he's re- truly the guy who throws a hundred ideas at the wall and one sticks. The problem is now he's throwing a hundred ideas out there and 99 of them, he's doing it. 
live on TV. Yeah. You, you yeah. know what I mean? Gotcha, gotcha. He, okay. Remember, we always talk about, like, you know, how Chris Jericho couldn't fit in the WWE locker room. He always yeah. butt heads. He always have all these ideas, but they keep pushing him down. But maybe they were trying to protect his worst tendencies in his yeah. WWE. No, it's just like John Moxley, right? They're protecting him from himself. Yeah. People who have done it before, and, you know, for better or for worse, you never know, right? Like, there are some people who maybe don't see your vision. But now, he, he, truly, he is in a place where the guy is like, okay, let's do it, whatever you want, you know? Yeah, and yeah. now he's and, doing some of his cringiest work ever. Yeah, the thing about Chris Jericho is I feel that he, I always thought he would listen to fans, right? Yeah. He listens and he reacts accordingly. But I now I feel that he doesn't because nope. if he opens social media, a lot of people will just say, bro, you're old, just get retired. Just, <laughs> you know, take, even if you don't want to retire, just, you know, go away for a while, refresh your character. So Some... all over social media, I'm sure he reads it, but he's, he stubborn. <laughs> He's like, no, no, no. I'm going to prove to you all I still got something left in me. He, he boomer, bro. He, bo- <laughs> he don't want to listen. He want... Well, uh, so, okay. It's uh, very... It's very... Uh, and I don't want to say... Not like I'm a great actor or anything. But it's very obvious where he's trying to lead this storyline down. And it's tedious AF. It is I- cringeworthy AF. You know? And so, yeah. They do the match. They lose because uh, Y2J and... Hope they were arguing about something. Shibata took the loss, blah, blah, blah. So it became a whole like... I And I I didn't feel anything about Shane Taylor promotions. Like yeah. I didn't get to know them better through this. It's completely... This whole angle is about Jericho and Hope. Even yeah. Shibata, he had his moments but oh no, he's just a, like a third wheel yeah, uh, yeah. in this. So they're obviously leading to Hope versus Chris Jericho, Lionheart. And Chris, Chris his... Pop has dropped dramatically in terms of when he comes out, people wow. being excited. No more Judas. No more Chris, sing-along. Chris doesn't use Judas anymore, right? No, he uses uh, some other music. his Lionheart music or whatever it is. So this is like a mini Lionheart run. La, that's yeah. what I'm trying to say. Um, I, I did not enjoy it. It just felt very community theatre. <laughs> Bro, like, like, let's be honest. When was the last AW rivalry or feud that Chris Jericho had that actually got people... Or like really into it, bro. His first run. So That's basically, about it. everything after he losing the title after MGF. That's yeah. it, right? Because I'm trying to remember, right? Did anything good come out of the Jericho Appreciation Society? Nope. No, it kind of just fizzled out, didn't it? He yeah, he didn't build anyone from there. Yeah, at least the inner circle they had a blow off somehow. I I I obviously I don't remember exactly, right? The inner circle had some sort of a blow off. But the, the JAS the, sort of just like, you blink and one, all of a sudden they have disappeared. They've sort of broken up. Yeah, the blow off was getting MJF into the group. Oh yeah. MJF, you know, turned, turned him, you know, or took over the group and then um, created the pinnacle. Remember mm. the pinnacle was a thing? Like, like there was some yes. storyline sense to whatever that went down that time, right? Yeah. But I feel like literally like what you say, he's just, okay, I got no more feud. I'm going to just start a random four-month rivalry or three-month rivalry. I'm going to just throw sticks at the wall. Yep. But bro, he, he needs to go away because if, if not, uh, he's going to retire where, where there's no pop, no reaction to him, you know? Yeah, yeah. And that's a shame because, you know, he's obviously done really great things in the industry, right? So there is that. Um, the main event, main event it, it, it was a banger. Like, you got two veterans in there. Yeah, it's Dustin un- was great. Yeah. Dustin it, was great, right? It really did feel like a Wish.com version of WrestleMania's main event. But that aside, you got to respect the two, you know, uh, veterans, right? Yeah, yeah. See, here's, here's, the, here's my big problem now. Here's my big problem. And we'll get to the meat of the matter, right? It's like, you... I don't care how good the rest of the stuff was. Okay, to me, Adam Copeland versus Penta and the main event were sort of like, all right, the positives. Let's call even though I was not a fan of Copeland versus Penta because, you know, that match was like, uh, okay, whatever, like, it had no heat. Lah. Mm. At least those who are entertaining doesn't embarrass the business or the company, right? The rest of it was just uh, mediocre or worse. Yeah, yeah. What really sank this entire show for me, and once again, self-inflicted wound, because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if the Young Bucks came out with the idea, it doesn't matter if Will Ospreay came out with the idea, Tony Khan has to say, he's the boss, right? Yeah. Even if Young Bucks came out with this whole idea, even if Will Ospreay came out with the idea to trash uh, Triple H on the mic, mm. Tony Khan could have said, no. It's even worse 
if Tony Khan was the one who told them to do it. There are some reports that say, yes, it was Tony's idea. Some reports that say it was the talent's idea. Who the hell knows? It's, yeah. All this is conjecture at this point, right? Yep, yep. No confirmation. But what we all do know is Tony Khan ultimately has the final say. So he needs to be responsible for what goes out on his television show. And what he put on his television show... Okay, which one you start with, bro? Which one you want to start with? Uh, let's start with the co-main event, which is uh, Will Ospreay's promo. <laughs> let's let, let's get that out of the way first. You have one of your big million-dollar signings, who yeah. is a massive baby face right yeah. now. He goes out there, and and I've said it before, I'll say it again, he is a really good promo. Yeah, even though he has an English accent, the whole bruv, bruv, bruv thing, I think that can get over. It has gotten over in a way, yeah. right? Agreed. And we agree that he's phenomenal in the ring, but he needs to dial it back. Save yeah. moves, save sequences, not try to like overdo it, right? Yeah. And I guess, you know, maybe Tony Khan told him to do it. Maybe he felt like he should have done it, but he wanted to address Triple H's comments. So Triple mm -hmm. H on the Pat McAfee show mentioned about certain signing. He didn't name any names, by the way. So he could have been referring to Kenny Omega, Mercedes Monet, anybody. But whatever, yeah. like, maybe he was talking about Will Ospreay. Who gives a shit, right? But Triple H basically said, you know, some people, um, they don't like or they want to do our schedule. You know, they don't want to embrace our grind, the grind, whatever it is. And if that's not what you want, then we don't want you here. Which, to be honest, is a very fair statement to make. Mm. What, what do you think about that? Do you think that he was swanning them? Or I, is he just saying, look, if you don't want to work our schedule, then we don't need you here. Uh, I see both sides actually, to be really okay. honest. Okay. Like I, I see, you know, Triple H's point of view. I don't think he's throwing him under the bus. No. no. And, and you have to understand the context, right? He is saying it on a podcast. He's not saying it on WWE pro programming, right? Yes. And he's saying that, you know, if at your level in your career where you just started out, you really do not want to embrace the grind, then how can we rely on you as a top star in the future? Because WWE's model is you need to, you know, be doing all this, mm. uh, you know, uh, media and like all these dates and that is the WWE system, right? Yeah. And if you don't want, if you don't want to embrace that, then we don't want you here. I think that's fair on his point of view. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also see like maybe Will Ospreay's point of view where maybe when he was actually having all this like legit, you know, private conversations while negotiating with WWE, he probably like made it very clear, you know, I, I have a family in London, you know, yep. I have a stepson and he's going through the, I want to raise him there in London. So mm -hmm. I want to be based in London, right? But I'm willing to come to uh, US, you know, to do all the dates, to train and all that kind of stuff. But I do not want to be away from my family. So I do not want to relocate my family. Sure. He probably laid, you know, very clearly for everyone. And if WWE was, was insistent and say that, no, we do not want you to make your schedule work. Mm. We want you to come like everyone else, train in a performance center yep. and then be be based in US. And then he said, no, I can't. You know, I I, I disagree. I think I'm going to take this deal instead, which maybe might have paid me more money, sure, yep. but gave me the schedule that I need for my family. Nothing wrong because for us, we're also not slaves to our corporate government, uh, our, our, our companies, right? We, yep. we also want to be able to have that work-life balance, blah, blah, blah. Yep. So nothing wrong with you know, Will Ospreay saying that, you know, I do not want this schedule. No, absolutely. It doesn't work for me, right? Yeah. The problem is, he should have gotten out in public and Triple H put it out in public. Well, he, as in, he put the sentiment lah. Because somebody, well, here's the thing, somebody asked him about it. So is he going to just say no comment? You know? Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I, I get what you're saying. But once again, to your point, he did it on a podcast, not on television mm -hmm. where television time is money. He wasn't yep. being petty on television. Yep. Whereas the Will Ospreay thing, you know, here's the thing. You had, what, five minutes to go out there and promote your match against Brian Danielson at Dynasty and you spent half of it talking about Triple H. And, you know, those who don't know won't know what the hell you're talking about, right? Yep. Yep. We talked about this before. The, your casual will be like, what, 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 talking, what, talking about the grind, all this, referring to some, and then, you know, make jokes about grinding. Okay, so this, uh, and this is like, I don't know who wrote this line for him, the whole grinding on the boss's daughter line, right? Yeah. It's like, are you seriously going and putting somebody down, somebody who is right now at the peak of his, like, like of his run? Right? Like, yeah. yeah, and everyone has, is universally praising him for the work he's done for the wrestling industry, taking it to heights it's never been before. 
in charge of some of the best storylines and story arcs right now. Are you really? Are you really throwing that guy under the bus? What kind of idiot are you? And if he, if somebody wrote that for him, then the boss, whoever um, who wrote that for him, needs to ask themselves, what the hell are you trying to do? It's yep. obviously trying. It's pet. It's petty. Petty behavior. They're showing yep. their pettiness right now. Either it's Will Ospreay or it's whoever who asked him to say this. Showing so, their pettiness right now. Going back to your point about, you know, they're not in the same business of, you know, putting butts in seats, right? Yeah. What was the takeaway from that promo? Did anyone come away from that promo thinking, oh man, I can't wait to watch Dynasty and see Will Ospreay fight Brian Danielson? <laughs> no, exactly. So, okay, he finally did pivot to talking about Brian Danielson, but there was not much to that because he has spent most of the time talking about the other company that's doing better. Right? And your diehard fans will get the reference. Your casual audience won't know. But nobody went, nobody came away from that thinking, oh, I must watch Dynasty. Wait, like, if, what? If, what let, a wa- let, waste of TV time. He talked about wasting TV time. He did exactly that. Okay, let, let, let me put my Tony, uh, Tony Khan cap here, right? Oh, like, God. I'm the booker of AEW right now, okay? Bro, 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 hang, it, hang on, hang on. Don't fear for your life. No, no, no. I am fearless. Okay, so that, <laughs> that doesn't make me Tony Khan then. But anyway... Here's what I would do with this promo, okay? Mm. I'm given five minutes, you know, I'm supposed to promote, uh, you know, Dynasty, my dream match with Brian Danielson, and I want to get something off my chest because I'm very, you know, unhappy that to- uh, Triple H clearly took a shot at me, even though it's uh, implied, not he never called out my name, right? Yeah, yeah. He can say, hey, you know, I, you know, I've heard rumors saying that, you know, I don't embrace the grind, right? And then, like, you know, people say that, you know, I'm not willing to work, uh, embrace the grind. And I'm saying, like, I'm looking at you, Brian Danielson. Huh? You've uh, been... Su- you know what I mean? Make yeah. it about the feud, right? Yeah. Brian Danielson, you might say that, you know, I'm one of your dream matches, dream opponents. And you might have said that, you know, you want to go New Japan and achieve all these goals. Mm. I've done that. You know, I have done your career better than you ever wish oh, you could. Oh, bro. What? You know what I mean? Yeah. Bro, no, not exactly. But here's the thing, right? You think he's CM Punk, You think he can cut the promos that CM Punk can? See, going back, like I told you just now, right? I watch a whole bunch of old CM Punk stuff, right? He Mm. has the ability of blending, promoting the next thing, but also slipping reality into that. That's the beauty. That's the, like... That's his secret sauce. That is CM Punk can do it well. Bro, exactly. That is the secret sauce. He is smart enough to judge the crowd reaction. Instantly, when he throws something out that's too inside and he realizes it, he'll pivot and start promoting what's next. Correct. He knows how to do the business. Whereas these guys, because their job is not to get people interested for the next show, they would just say whatever they want and they just are working for the Mark audience. They are catering catering hardcore, 100% to the Mark audience who knows exactly, oh, he's talking about Triple A. No, and even, uh, even then, even if you want to swan Triple H for the Mark audience, like I said, Triple H is right now being revered. Why are you swanning the guy who is universally looked at as the person that has brought pro wrestling back? Look, the smart, even the smart marks, smart fans right now, right? At least I would say 90% of them love what Triple H is doing. So why would yep. you go and make your top baby face shit himself like that? That's All stupid. Right. That's petty, it's, stupid bullshit. Even if he can't do a CM Punk and can't orate his thoughts in that way, right? Mm. He can literally just answer his so-called critics yep. by laying out his resume, bro. I am a yeah. you know IWGP yeah. champion. I've bro, went hey. through freaking you know G One climax how many times? Yeah. You know what I mean, bro? Put together a footage, a package, B roll, whatever. You know they have the production people do that. I think that would have. I always say this: show me, don't tell me. Right? All right. Put All together a right. uh, uh, best of highlights. Uh, show you, show show you my grind. Whatever. But All right. it was just, uh, I feel bad. Because honestly, if Tony told him to do that, I feel bad for Will. Because Tony yeah. using, Tony being petty made his top draw look like shit. Yeah, yeah. If, if you know, it was um, Will Osprey's idea, mm. I was Tony Khan, I would say, no. don't say in a promo. Yeah. Say we'll it on the podcast. I'm sure he can get his ass on busted open, kicked yeah. to the back. Oh, <laughs> any uh, of the sure. podcast. Yeah. Uh, but you, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, that's exactly it, right? Like you want to do all these like insider jabs, do it in a different medium. Don't do it on all precious right. television time where you're supposed to be putting butts in seats. Be- because, you know, on TV, they're trying to tell the story that, you know, uh, they're just competing with each other, Brian Nelson and Will Ospreay. Top that, you know, beat that. 
why can't he just make it part of the storyline where he yeah. know, squashes an opponent and after that he go uh he go walk past Brian Danielson and say like can you out, oh yeah. yeah can you, can you top that can you embrace the grind better than that or some shit like that like that yeah. can be their yeah, wing wing if they want but it still serves the storyline it just smacks of pettiness that's the yeah. problem it smacks of pettiness it makes the whole company look bad and it serves zero purpose yeah. whatsoever yeah. Talking about pettiness and serving no purpose whatsoever, I guess this it's time to talk about the main event of this podcast. <laughs> I, I love how uh, every time we were talking about other things, uh, you're like, okay, just, uh, just later on, later on, just in just a moment, <laughs> you're going to well, talk you know, about this. It, it, we are doing the WWE thing. You got to tease. You got to uh, cradle the ball sack a bit. You know what I mean? You can't give the full action right off the bat. Wow, that was a hell of an analogy, but... I mean, I'm pretty sure it's not from experience, Mr. Young, but yes, it was a great analogy. Uh, but before we do that, we want to say thank you to our wonderful sponsors <laughs> right now. Uh, Mirage Advisory, who have uh, very generously come in to say, hey, we like what you guys are doing. We're wrestling fans as well, and we want to shout out about wrestling. So, guys, do us a favor. Right? Go to their Instagram page right now, Mirage Advisory. Type that in. Drop them a follow. Yes, follow them for the best that is, the best that was, and best that ever will be in terms of taking care of you. And also, just know that, bro, guys, mm. no matter what it is, you know, WrestleMania might be over, but we are in the new era. We are in the Mirage Advisory era. If you smell la, 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 what Mirage are cooking. All right, so it's time for the main event. The reason I'm watching Dynamite and... <laughs> <sighs> like I said this on my Twitch stream the other day, right? Like, mm. you know, you can have really delicious Wayu beef, but if it's sandwiched in between two pieces of shit, it's still a shit sandwich. <laughs> it's not a beef sandwich, it's a shit sandwich, still. So you don't you don't take your sandwich with bread, lah. It's only wagyu, wagyu and shit shit. <laughs> <laughs> Look, no matter how good the matches were, and like I said before, there were bright spots, but by yep. and large, it was kind of a meh episode to me, right? Yeah. You have embarrassing... Sh this is pure embarrassing. From No matter how you try to look at this, it's just embarrassing. Let me look at it as somebody who, you know, is a little bit more invested in the industry, first of all. You had the Young Bucks come out and cut the driest, most asinine... They, they have zero fucking charisma. I am... Ooh, they made me curse. First Bro, F-bomb. You talk about CM Punk having a one hour and 20 minutes promo yeah. list, right? Yeah. Has anyone ever compiled the top 10 Young Bucks promos of all time? I like, want serious to, question. I, serious want question. Someone, I want someone to put that up and then see how many views it gets. Because good God, man. Did you watch this whole segment, I assume. Yes, I did. I oh, did okay. Yes. <laughs> right. Ah, first of all, and once again, like if Tony Khan forced them to do it and they didn't want to do it, then shame on Tony Khan. If they wanted to do it and Tony Khan let them do it, shame on Tony Khan. <laughs> once again, everything stops at Tony Khan, right? So yep. whatever, like, you know what I think about the Young Bucks. Take that aside. This is Tony Khan's fault, you yep. know? Um, they try to... Fr I, I can't even remember because their promo was so dry. Uh, how they try to frame it in that, like, you know... Uh, they the they were trying to market their match against FTR. The 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 summary of this was they are trying to promote their match against FTR by showing this footage. How does that even make any sense whatsoever? It, it was a reach, lah. Let's just put it that way, lah. That, like remember how I talk about how Will Osprey should have pivoted and made that whole jab yep. about the feud with Brian Danielson. So yep. the idea was there with this scenario. Trying to make it about FTR and Young Bucks. But I tell you, it's such a reach. Like, no link, bro. The link like yeah. that, like, cannot reach. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it was tenuous at best, right? Yeah. And so they do this, like, super insider promo where if you... And once again, I always... It's part of my profession too, bro. Whenever yeah. I do what I do on the radio, right? I never talk about things to quote-unquote insider. I know I'm mm. a huge fan of Marvel, for example, right? Yeah. I'm not going to use insider terms when I talk about the latest Marvel movie. I will always talk about it in a way where if you don't know what the hell any of this means, you mm. will understand. This is yeah. what all of them should be doing. This is what CM Punk understands. A yeah. lot of the best promos understand this, right? Yeah. But the Young Bucks don't. And so none of it made sense. When I put on my casual cap, this whole thing was like, okay, we're going to show you some footage. And then they showed the footage. I'm pretty sure for legal reasons, they cannot play audio, nor can they narrate over it, nor can they put music over it. I'm sure it's mm. a legal thing. It okay. has to be un like not doctored whatsoever. It's probably yeah. a legal thing. 
right? Yeah, yeah. So you had this footage. You can't really see CM Punk's face, mm-hmm. and CM Punk can probably sue them if you know uh, his face appears. To be honest, yeah. yeah. And it's just it, it is what it is. First of all, you know, um, those who know know that CM Punk had already described this exactly, you know, blow by blow on the Errol Hawani show. Errol Hawani even put up a video of CM Punk talking and the footage, side-by-side side comparison, is yep. exactly what happened, right? Yep. Funny thing, that video got copyright strike. A lot of people putting up videos like these got copyright strike. Hmm. Interesting. Now they're scared. Now no. they want to backtrack. Yeah. <laughs> So why put this thing that to the casual means nothing? To the insider fans, and we saw all the footage online of fans in the crowd, they were chanting CM Punk. So you're getting a guy over that's not on your show. A guy who, you know, the joke is, wow, the dude was on Raw, on Dynamite, on WrestleMania weekend. Like, he was having a moment, CM Punk. The, and the funniest thing is, right, not only did they copyright strike everything down, Mm. They actually uploaded the full segment on their AEW YouTube channel and then they removed the exact footage. <laughs> so their segment on the YouTube, right, got no context. You know. It's just the Young Bucks <laughs> talking about it. Suddenly it cuts to FTR coming out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what? Well, I, I'm, it has, okay. I, I, I don't know what happened. It smacks to me of pettiness. After CM Punk went out there and quote-unquote, made Tony Khan look bad, translation, told the truth, he got butt hurt. And he was like, Very clearly. I pull out the footage, which makes CM Punk look even better. <laughs> like, I, I don't, I don't know. I, like, I can't wrap my head around how much of a self-inflicted wound this is. Bro, the only way, right, mm. Tony Khan AW would have come out looking good, right, was if there was actual AW cameras rolling. Not CCTV, yeah. Uh. Ah. Actual AW cameras rolling, following stuff back. So you know how they do the behind the scenes kind of shit? Yeah. Saw CM Punk with audio saying uh, whatever, whatever, whatever. Showing Jungle Boy being calm mm. and not saying anything that actually triggers him. Yeah. And then when CM Punk lays the first punch or the first shove, which was clearly for all to see, he yeah. did it. He did shove him. He did try to, I get choke him out a little bit. <laughs> right? And and we all know now, maybe we didn't see at first, but Tony Khan was actually just out of the frame sitting Correct. on the monitors, right? Mm. And we did see the monitor shake, la, the table shake. If we could actually, actually see CM Punk literally like lunging for Tony Khan or going for his neck or whatever it is. And Tony Khan like maybe fell over or like really something that would have hurt him or made him felt like he feared for his life. Then maybe people will be like, okay, you know, I think CM Punk went a bit overboard by the, the way he acted, blah, blah. Mm. And it shouldn't have been released eight months later. It should have been released yeah. that the week after when Tony Khan made that announcement. Unfortunately, yeah. we have to fire CM Punk because of what he did this. Then they show the footage. And yeah. then they can move on. Not eight months later, revisit an old wound. Yeah. You, it, you get you? It really... Uh, everything about it feels petty. Feels like a ratings... They are trying to... Because they're also trying to renegotiate their TV deal. So it, mm. it smacks of, okay, let's just like... Since all this talk is going out there, let's just try to spike a rating and we've seen the ratings it is embarrassing like okay you did it for like what 50,000 or something like like they got up to 800,000 that was their highest not even a million you know um, 800,000 used to be their average yeah and then in the last three weeks for some reason ever since Mercedes Monet debuted <laughs> it was it plummeted it plummeted so, to like 750 and now they're just back to their average yeah so like was it worth it getting all this negative uh Backlash as well. Because literally nobody's out there going, yeah, this was a good... Like, you know, I'm mean, even the even the diehard AEW fans are going, what are you doing? This is petty. This is eight months too late. It, yeah. It, uh, even, oh my God. even if their only intention was to create some sort of... Buzz. Yeah. Buzz or trending topic so that, you know, they are still Fail. in the news cycle. Yes, people talk about them, but in the worst kind of PR backfiring way. Okay, so... Will people watch next week to see, oh, they really effed up this week. Let's watch next week to see um, how they recover. Do you think maybe that's what they're going for? Like they always say, no no such thing as bad press, right? So yes, it's gotten people talking, even though it's majority negative. Do you think it's gotten, like, you know, maybe they're like, I don't care. I just want people to talk because I want ratings. Do you think that's the thought? 
process. May, maybe people will watch because, you know, like you, they lost a bet and then they have to watch for the next one month. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but like, no, they what? won't because their draw is on WWE's programming right now. <laughs> the guy right? they're who, cheering for is on the other side. Yeah, who, who is their draw? Like, who, okay, legit question. Who are you going to watch AEW Dynamite for? Because, I would say I w- I would watch Dynamite to see what you know Will Ospreay does. I'm mm. curious to see Adam Copeland, Swerve Strickland, Joe. But if you want to put it in WWE context, ah, uh, they are like the the Jay Uso, the Sami yeah. Zayn, the Kevin They're Owens, upper mid card at best. Yes, they are not Roman freaking Reigns or like you Rock, know CM Punk. Yeah. There was a there was a moment where MJF could have been that guy. Mm. But you know the I would say his run was yeah mixed didn't you know wasn't the all and conquer because halfway through he became a baby face and had yeah. a full smalls with Adam, Adam Cole, Cole who baby. is supposed to be the devil and then he's disappeared because yeah he's injured but why bring him back injured because he had to pull the trigger on that devil storyline uh, it's just uh, it's just my, bad my bad biggest, planning bla- bad pivoting and now bad decisions my, my biggest fear with Tony Khan and EW is this right like mm. they have showed their hand yep. they are putting all their chips on a media rights renewal yep correct yep what makes them think that if Warner Brothers sees this and they are like oh you know what I'm gonna pay them even more money to keep this programming on our network nope uh, no. they've They've just snowball. Okay, so what this is, it really does seem like a snowball effect, right? They're like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Let's try something to boost. And that is the big F up. There are memes out there of like Renee Young looking very like embarrassed when Will Ospreay oh, shat on Triple H. Tony Schiavone, after the video, he was like, oh. And then he's, people are like, oh, he's seen this before in WCW. It he's does getting feel, WCW flashbacks, right? It yeah. do, bro, it does because, okay, I watched a lot of that era of WCW when it was like the decline of WCW. I actually yeah. randomly caught a lot of it because it was on the TV. I was living with my aunties at the time, right? Mm-hmm. So I had that to watch. There was no Raw. I was a very sad time in my life. <laughs> but I, WCW, I, WCW only. Yeah, so I did watch the... And it has the same vibe. Like, they are trying... They are desperate. They are in desperation mode. Yeah. But the thing is, they wouldn't... And this is the most like kasian part of it, like the most like putting, putting. part of it. Yeah. yeah. It's like, they w- they don't need to be in this position. They yeah. have talent. They have people that can work. They the have great old, wrestlers. They yeah. have great wrestlers. They have great backstage people, producers and writers. The problem is, one person is single-handedly ruining this for everybody. Yeah. Because he yeah. doesn't want to relinquish control. That's the problem. And that is the most putting part of this whole story right now. Yeah. But that's the thing, right? Like, you know, they're trying to make this new tagline in AEW where the best wrestle <laughs> and they are half right. You know, they are they are great wrestlers. One of the best wrestlers in the world are all wrestling in AEW. Mm. But again, I've probably said this a thousand times in our podcast. Wrestling is not enough to sustain an audience. Like, bro, exhibition bro, wrestling is not enough. Bro, 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 stop. I, 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 want, I want to stop you right there. Because this implies, right, from bottom, top to bottom, right, they have banger matches. This, this is what that implies. It is absolutely furthest from the furthest thing from the truth because we still have people like, um, uh, what what is his name? Uh, the best friends, the the most useless one. Chuck Taylor is still there. Chuck Taylor. Um, like I don't know if them. Fi- oh, and then there's the whole thing about the firing of. Uh, let's talk about the firing of certain people, right? Yeah. yeah. Because and, and then you know what Tony can't say at the press scrum, right after ROH. Oh yeah, I had to make funds for you know to, to get the rights for some song. He yeah. budget cut, he literally said, I heard the audio finally, I'm like, he literally said that he had to make budget cuts, you know, uh, fire a bunch of wrestlers, take away their livelihood, not pay them anymore because he needed to license a song for somebody in ROH. I was like, wow, the fact that you freaking openly said that, first of all, dumb. Second of all, what kind of a fucked up decision is that? Bro, and it's for ROH. Yeah. How many no. people are going to watch that? Yeah. So it's obvious that he's doing this for his own show. He wants Shok Sindiri only. Oh my God, this guy must come out to this audience. Let me cut $100,000. $100,000 for a song, bro. Let me cut $100,000 that could feed this guy for a couple of months or however oh. many a uh, year, right? 
so that I can have my favorite guy come out to his favorite song. Like, what the? F- like, Bro, how it, screwed up is that? In Singapore context, a hundred k a year is like what eight k a month salary, hmm. maybe? Yeah. Bro, eight k a month. Salary. You think in Singapore, do people want to take that money and survive? Ah, uh? how <laughs> like how out of touch is it? Like, it it just paints a picture of a billionaire who's out of touch, who's now very embarrassed because of what... And he lives on the... Like, he loves the message. He's a message board guy, right? Yeah. Yep. And now that, you know, CM Punk made him look bad in front of his message board friends, he's like... He's panicking. He's... To show the footage, you know, pa- CM Punk is a bad guy. And then now he's... Actually, I I feel bad for it. I really do. Because, yep. like, this whole... I'm I'm... I am not, I don't doubt that he feared for his life because I'm sure he has never been in that sort of a situation. Even though he runs a football club, like you're telling me that players never got into it backstage uh, in the locker room. Maybe he's never been in the locker room. This is the first time he's been in an actual sports locker room, right? And then he's seen something like this. But you you think footballers don't like get into shoving matches? You think um, soccer players, you think uh, hockey players don't have altercations? Like what? You know, so... I am convinced that he feared for his life because he's been in this bubble his whole life. Yeah. I'm, you know, I mean, even in school, nobody bullied him because his dad is like a billionaire. What, what, you mm. know? Good. Okay. You know, you know, <laughs> you, you, it, it's it's a lot. It's a lot to take in, right? Like, but my my biggest. Uh, okay, this is something I've observed, right? Observed. And okay. Pro- probably a lot of people might have like it might have gone over their head. I remember when AEW first started, there's a lot of all these backstage uh, cameras and like, you know, BTS where like, you yeah, see yeah. Tony, Tony Khan talking to like Cody Rose, Tony yeah. Khan like with his coffee coming out and like talking to the wrestlers, right? Mm. Have you no seen more. any footage of Tony Khan socializing with the wrestlers recently? <laughs> I think it was like, oh my God, can you imagine if there was a camera and then at some point they released the footage of like his evolution. At first he's all happy, happy and then now he's like freaking just huddled in the corner, freaking stressed out of his mind, <laughs> hair the, completely. The hair un- all exploded. <laughs> yeah. Um, look, for his own health, he needs to step back. Like legit, for the health of the business and his company, but m- more importantly right now, I think he's reached a point where he needs to justify his own actions and that's never a good spot. His ego is getting in the way of he, business. He needs a sounding board. You know, like, you know, when a president needs to have a chief of staff to advise yep. him, he needs an yep. advisor. And when I say an advisor, right, you know how WWE, how it's being run currently. Vince McMahon did everyone's job back in the day. Yep. But now they have Triple H to focus on creative. Yep. They have Nick Khan to focus on the business aspect. Mm. And they have Lee Fitting to do all the production shit, right? Yes. yes. And so, Triple H yeah. talked about this in the press conference as well. Like yeah. how they have like the dream team where everybody is a specialist in their role. They focus on that. Yes. Yes. If Tony Khan wants to be the booker, right? Fine. I I mean we can't do anything. <laughs> no, no, we no. Obviously, we can't do anything. But we all know he shouldn't. Yeah, he shouldn't, right? But if he wants to do the business side of it, maybe he's better at promoting the business. Like yeah. being a promoter, being a promoter and being a booker are two separate roles, ah. Huh, by the way, I also don't think he's good at being a promoter. He's great at numbers, so he should take a back seat and be the numbers guy. You know Crunch he the be? numbers. You know what he should be? What? Just be the money guy lah. Just provide the money. <laughs> yeah, Let yeah. everyone run the business correct. <laughs> no, but you see, this, and it's clearer than ever. AEW mm. is a billionaire's uh, pet project. Plating, yeah. Plating right now. It's clear to see because he's not relinquishing. I don't want to let you take control of my toy. This is his billion dollar toy. Okay, the last comparison I'm going to make, right? Since, you know, we're talking about football owners, mm. right? No. Uh, you you do you 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 know right the story of uh Rob McElhenney and Ry- uh, Ryan Reynolds buying a football club in Wrexham. Wrexham. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. That one so, I know. Yeah. So Wrexham, when they bought the club, right, they were mm. in the non-football league division. It's so like league- the bottom tier. It's like the fifth or fourth. Oh, right. right. So every time, every season, when they like get to like the top three, they promote lah. Then top three oh. promote uh, something oh, like that lah. Correct, yeah. correct. So when they bought them, right, they were in the conference. Uh, league la, right mm. so Premier League Championship League 1 League 2 non-league they were in non-league okay <laughs> okay so just to give context uh, bro in the last two years uh, they have subsequently promoted themselves twice oh wow so they're in Championship uh, or League no, 2 
Oh, they are one. in League League One now, so okay. they are from non League. 2002-2003 season, they they went got promoted to League Two, mm. and this past season they 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 uh they became the champions of League Two. Yeah, we and they just got promoted to League One, so that means starting next year will be League One. Mm. So why I draw this comparison to Tony Khan is like right Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney came in, they were fans, right? Mm. They wanted to own a football club, they wanted to be owners, mm. which is what Tony Khan wants to be, an owner. The moment they w- became an owner and they bought the share, the stake of the club, first thing they did, they hire a CEO to run mm. the business, mm. a football guy to run yep. the business, yep. right? They hired a football coach to run the team. Yep. Tony Khan is trying to be the football coach, playing, uh, coaching Fulham, trying to be the CEO, buying the players. That's what he's doing. He's been doing it with Fulham. Mm. And he's doing it with AEW. He wants to sign all his wrestlers. He wants to tell them how to do their matches, book them in storylines. But he's essentially Ryan Reynolds. Okay. He's just there to provide them. He's not even at school kids, right? Let's not talk about it. No, no. no. Whoa, whoa, that is a horrible uh, comparison. But no, yeah. I get what you're saying. And right, But Ryan Reynolds is smart enough. Like he's Ryan like, okay. Reynolds is one thing, right? He's a great marketing guy. Yes. yes. So he's out there doing the marketing. He's not telling the players how to play. He's not, yes. no, and which is the problem with Tony Khan. He's trying to do everything. And let's not forget also the fact that he's, uh, Tony Khan, that is, doing the same thing with the Jacksonville Jaguars and Fulham. So who has time? So he's exactly. obviously stretched thin beyond belief. He should, like, this all, once again, this all stops at Tony Khan. He needs to be the guy that says, okay, I'm obviously doing too much. I should just be the money guy for all three of these and just sit back and yes, show up once in a while, smile, smile, shake hands with your employees, but don't try to tell them how to run wrestling. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He just needs to there be a few. Uh, he, if you want to put his face there, mm. make everyone know that this is his company, fine. Look, fine. even if he wants to be a Jack Tani once in a while, fine, I get it, you know? Like he wants yeah. in a while, um, okay, do his awkward ass promos, whatever. Yeah, but yeah. don't just stop with the pencil. Yeah, every like, time I cringe, you know, when I see a AEW press release, uh, uh, Tony Khan, head booker, CEO, vice president, uh, talent relation, God. head of creative, like, he will list out all his accolades. It's like, these are eight people's job. Why are you trying to do all eight people's <laughs> job? I, I don't know, like, uh, at some point, yeah. So, so anyway, just to put a bow on it, um... I'm yeah. amazed that this uh, podcast hasn't been shut down yet, but we'll have to wait and see. No, like, if we show the footage, then we'll get pulled yeah. out. By Copyright, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know what? I, I, I want to end the podcast on a positive note. Mm. You know who's my favorite guy from AEW right now? Who? You'll be shocked. Oh. You'll be so shocked. Prince Nana. <laughs> no. Uh, Mina. Guy... The, the Mina chick no. who, like, uh, no, no, kissed no, 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 no. whoever. Sorry, I'm not uh, all, all you weird, weirdos who love HLA. Calling. Gravior models, I don't know. Why <laughs> but anyway, uh, somebody actually recently, just a few days ago, while game and streaming on his uh, Twitch, gave his comments on Brawl Out and talk about his role in Brawl Out. Okay. Do you hear what Kenny Omega said? Oh, no, what? Okay, so Kenny Omega for the first time broke his silence on Brawl Out while, you know, Twitching streaming. and streaming, right? And he gave the most level-headed response. And you know what he said? He said that when Brawl Out happened, my job was to take care of Larry, get him out of danger because I treat animals like humans, you know? Mm. I care about them. I didn't want him to get hurt. It's just unfortunate that, you know, people who were throwing hands or, you know, where the, the situation got violent, didn't know who was involved in the fight and who was not part of the fight and trying to break things up. Mm. So when he came in, his intention was to break up the fight um, and he honestly said that, you know, after the whole thing went down, he wanted to reach out to Tony, uh, CM Punk and squash everything there and then and reach out to him. But because of other factors that was not within his control, he wasn't allowed to, mm. right? He said as far as he's concerned, he has no problem with CM Punk, he has respect for CM Punk and we are on good terms until now. <sighs> and and the last thing he said was that he he hasn't been an EVP for the last four years. He hasn't been treated like an EVP the last four years. Even though his name says he's an EVP, mm. he doesn't have the power, he doesn't have the stroke. He has, you know, tried to give and contribute his ideas, whether his ideas are being uh, taken or, you know, uh, or approved or, or being executed, that's not within his control. 
And he said, if it was up to him, he would have handled the situation differently mm-hmm. than his fellow colleagues. Oh, I mean, I've said this before. I feel like Kenny is just unfortunately lumped together with his friends. Guilty by association. <laughs> guilty by association. His friends who aren't the best, um, you know, EVPs or best leaders, and they are the ones whispering in Tony Khan's ear. So this, like this trio, right, of the Young Bucks and Tony Khan. Not you take Kenny Omega away, right? This trio is what's killing AEW. Honestly, yeah. if if uh, you if you hear CM Punk's interviews, has he ever single out Kenny Omega and talk shit about him? No, no, he's never. Because I'm sure they're you know, it's once, like you said like guilty by association. Yeah, I mean, other than it's still biting him in the forearm, <laughs> that 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 is maybe what exactly happened. Mm. Uh, the only thing he's guilty of, I would say, is when they return. Remember he. You know, played to the crowd in the or during the match, oh. and he like pretended to bite his arm or that yeah, kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. So maybe that is him leading into the tendencies of his friends. Yeah. When you surround yourself with a certain type of people, you tend to become that kind of person. You know. Exactly. That's why I encourage everyone to have a loner face in their life at least like once. You know. So you can be yourself. You can find yourself. Correct. Correct. <laughs> don't, don't just hang out with your friends. You love your friends for everything because you know when the time comes where you're alone or you have mm. to be the leader of your family or you have to manage your own life, your friends are not going to be there, man. Not, yeah. I mean, they, they will be there to support you but they're not going to be there to walk you through how to get out of your shit. <laughs> Bro, wrestling teaches us life lessons, man. This oh, is crazy. Course. This is beauty yeah. of... I love pro wrestling to quote Michael Cole. <laughs> yeah. um, um, do, do you know Tom Hinchcliffe? Uh, he's a comedian. Uh, he... you mean Tony Hinchcliffe? Tony Hinchcliffe, yeah, the one he yeah. was on Joe Rogan. Yeah, right? yeah, he's a big wrestling fan. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. um, just just to wrap up, right? You know, he said something on the Undertaker's podcast. He was his, the first guest on Undertaker's Six Feet Under podcast, mm. and he said like, you know, wrestling was such a big deal for him because he didn't have a father. Like his father, oh. I think, walked out or died or something. I remember, and then he said like. I look to wrestlers as my father figures. Wow. He said it to Undertaker directly to his face. You know, I said, I look I look up to you, wait, wait. to Ric Flair. Did he call Undertaker daddy? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, I expect maybe, him to do something like that. He's a comedian after all. Nah, I don't know. I'm daddy! They didn't have that kind of uh, you know, <laughs> dynamic. That would be interesting for sure. <laughs> but he said, like, you know, in, in, in the household where he, there wasn't any masculinity in the mm-hmm. household, he learned how to be a man from Ric Flair, I mean, I'm sorry, that's not well, a good example. I, yeah, that's a terrible <laughs> example, bro. You know, but he said, he he literally listed, you know, Ric Flair, The Rock, Stone Cold, mm. Undertaker. Those are the poor people that he learned about how to be a man from. So, going back to the values, how wrestling teaches you about life, right? You can learn a lot of things on how to be a man, what to do in life, and mm. also what not to do. <laughs> yeah. And how not to conduct yourself. I think Tony Khan... Unfortunately, at this point, he has found himself in a world that leaves him very exposed. I don't know if he faced this in Fulham because football fans are very passionate about their football as well. I'm okay. sure they're going to dig up everything about him. But for whatever it, because wrestling is what we are focused in on, right? It's like a lot of things are being laid out there yeah. for the whole world that he's probably been sheltered his whole life. And now... He's the not way ready he, to face this. Yeah. The way he's reacting is one of like, but you guys are supposed to love me. Yes. Why don't you love me? <laughs> and he's trying to do everything he can to try to swing favor uh, to his side. But yeah. he's realizing that it's not working anymore. Oh, let me give you a positive. FTR tried their darndest best. <laughs> I uh, After the... So, the video... So, Young Bucks did a bullshit... Cra- I, I, oh. am, am I the only one who thought that the Young Bucks promo before the video was horrendous? No, he, he had, they have been... They are worse than Mercedes Monet and giving him promos, bro. <laughs> Dude, yeah. Just just stick to being like in ring, you know, spot fest guys, lah. Okay. So they do that. And maybe they were okay, to their credit, they were probably painted into a very tight corner also if Tony Khan really told them, say, hey, I want you to air this, and they didn't want to do it, right? Because they tried to link it, it didn't work. And then FTR sort of riffed off of that and they, you know, they're like, why why did you show this? This is eight months ago, let it go, blah, blah, blah. They cut a really strong promo yep. promoting their match at mm. Dynasty, which should have been the point. Yep. Because the, the video did not promote the match. The Young Bucks didn't promote the match. At least FTR tried to promote the match. But I dare say, by the time the footage aired, people tune out. 
It was so it was way too long, too boring. Nothing happened. We know who are the professionals in AEW. We know who are the so-called yep. the, the good guys, the one that's trying to make things work, right? And they never get high, like remember when they were getting massive pops? Yeah. What happened? Yeah. Nothing. Um, I it's not to say that I don't want to watch them fight again, but I kind of don't want to watch them fight again. Yeah, no, it's, the <laughs> it's, fourth, like, it's the fourth time, bro. Come on. Yeah. Even though it's only... See, that's the thing. Even though it's only the fourth time, it feels like New Day versus the Usos. It's like, okay, I've yeah. seen this like way too many times already. I'm done. Yeah, they, exactly. they will, they're they going to have a great match, I'm sure, but I'm done. They are highlighting the wrong people. Yeah. They are not pushing the right stars. The stars who actually have the talent, who mm. can actually... You know, who, be the main event. Who have gotten over. That's the thing. You're talking about they have the talent, but that's an objective um, metric, right? You, yeah. you Just because you think or I think somebody has talent doesn't mean they actually have the talent or somebody else might think. But you're talking about the guys and the girls who are getting the biggest pops, who are, yeah. you know, uh, getting people talking about them on social media. The over problem organically. Is, yes. Yeah. The problem is, and CM Punk said it best, this is not their business. Their business is... In the in the, put, I just want to put up dream matches, five star matches. They are working for Dave Meltzer. That's all they're doing, and they are going to find out very soon when they don't mm. or they barely get their TV rights renewal. Where this mm. is going to lead them? Yeah, Dave Meltzer it shouldn't be the barometer. No, for what makes a wrestling company great? Because if he did, he would have played a more prominent position in the wrestling industry, not just a journalist, right? Yeah, yeah no, exactly, right? And like AEW needs to look at themselves. They are, we are barely selling out these um, arenas. Yeah. We need to change. We need to do something. Uh, it's not working. And unfortunately, Tony Khan has something to prove and he's going to mm. die, die, go down this route to his own detriment and to the detriment of everybody who's working there. Look, having a competitor is always a good thing. Mm -hmm. But right now, they are so far off. Like TNA looks more interesting than them. <laughs> well, that, that's the thing, right? But but I do not want or I do not wish for the downfall of AEW. Like no. to be really, really honest. Because the reason why WWE just had one of the biggest main events and mm. had Cody Rhodes as their main eventer was because Cody Rhodes' story traversed yep. through TNA, yep. AEW, AEW, AEW Japan, yes. really. yeah, 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 no, exactly. And CM Punk, honestly, you know, he had to go away. He showed up. And he, he finally came back to the WWE. So, no, I agree with you 100%. The, uh, people accuse me of tribalism. But here's the thing. Tell me when I'm telling lies. No, uh, <laughs> no. ultimately, I also don't want AEW to go out of business. Just like I don't want TNA to go out of business, right? The Why I'm getting all worked up and we are talking about this is because we can see that this guy is leading the company out of business. And yeah. that's not what we want. Yeah, yeah. We we want them to be a great alternative. We want people to be invested mm. in AEW storylines. Yeah. We and want to care about their champions. Yeah. And if anything, yes, if they are, let's say, even 50% of a competitor to WWE, this will push WWE to give us even better things. Be exactly. more uh, creative with their storytelling. Yes, you know? exactly. WWF and WCW. The... Monday Night Wars was a boom town in uh, wrestling. The yep. Monday Night Wars, right? Even but if you take it a decade back, mm. WWF and NWA. Yeah. NWA had a very loyal audience and a, a lot of people argue that NWA had the better wrestling in the mm. 80s. You mm -hmm, know, because mm -hmm. of the horse, Four Horsemen, because yep. of, you know, uh, Ricky Steamboat, uh, Ric Flair, Sting, like, there, there's a place for that. Yeah. You know? It, it, for, it makes the product better. Now, WWE is fighting themselves, honestly. And I can't yeah. remember who said it, but they're literally fighting themselves. They are yeah. not fighting against AEW. It's a different conversation altogether. Yeah. yeah. And somebody said, like, you know, if they just lose a bit more followers uh, or viewers, right, it's going to be NXT that is going to beat them in the ring. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, oh, okay. So the, the final, final joke, final joke, right? Yeah. It's like, the top draws of AEW right now are Sheldon Cooper and CM Punk. Because <laughs> if you look at the ratings, right, their highest was the uh, the start of the show. 
Mm-hmm. It was it the start of the Young Bucks, uh, the 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 the, no, the no. footage. It was it was the start, the start of the show. It right? was Big Bang Theories lead yeah. in into so, AEW. Some people don't know what the joke, the the link is with Big Bang Theory and Sheldon Cooper. In the US, they show the Big Bang Theory right before a rerun. Some of not new episodes are they show over already reruns of the Big Bang Theory right before uh, Dynamite. Yes. And what happened? This is just is viewer habit, right? A lot of people will stick around after the show to see what's next. That's why the first rating in Dynamite, technically the first rating and the last rating of te- the Dynamite, uh, you should disregard generally because yes. you're getting spill over. People who maybe, oh, Big Bang Theory finished already. I go uh, kitchen, make some Milo, whatever, come yes. back, see what's happening, you know? Yes. Then they see what's going on. Ah, fuck this lah. And then they... <laughs> yes, exactly. Because you notice their big drop is always after that or when there's a women's match. But that's All a different right. story altogether lah. So, right. Sheldon Cooper of the Big Bang. Hey, everyone say Sheldon Cooper. What about Leonard Hofstadter? Rajesh Kutharpali. And... Uh, <laughs> uh, oh shit, what's the other guy's name? Howard. Uh, Howard Wallowitz. Yes. Uh, what about Penny? I'm glad you're giving more love to the supporting cast. I know. Uh, I lo- this. I used to love watching Big Bang Theory. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm a fan of Big Bang. I love it Bro, as well. I-, I would watch a rerun. So like, <laughs> lo- logically, it makes sense, right? The show finish, you watch a little bit more of what's happening and you realize, oh, this is, is AEW stuff and you see, drop uh, off or not. The, di- the difference between Big Bang Theory is Big Bang is comfort food, bro. Mm. You know you'll get laughs. You know yep. you'll get a chuckle. You'll be interested. AEW is heart attack inducing you know <laughs> <laughs> it's like once in a while you might get, get something interesting but half the time is like what is, what is this sh- embarrassing shit right oh, man. so okay. so Sheldon Cooper Big Bang Theory is their biggest draw and then the next highest peak was CM Punk <laughs> CM Punk appearing on their their first pick in eight months. CM Punk appearing on the show. This is embarrassing on every single level. No matter how you want to look at it, as a mark, as a casual, it just you look at the numbers. It did absolutely nothing. It was not worth it. Yeah. They just had pie on their face. I'm very sad because why can't Samoa Joe pop a rating? He should be able to pop a rating. Why can't? Adam Copeland pop a rating. Why can't Mercedes Monet pop a rating? It's not about them. The, and AEW has proven that even if you have stars, you book them poorly, people are not going to give a poop it's about, about them. It's about how they are being presented. Yes, and WWE knows how to do that yeah. like so well versus AEW. Like, oh, okay, I see these guys every week. What's the big deal? Adam exactly. Copeland uh, versus... You know, Adam Copeland, Pinter, has, uh, become, Adam Copeland has become what or not? What? He has become very mysterious on WWE. Yeah. You know? Yes, he's the guy yes. that you see, he's a legend, you acknowledge that, but like, yep. yeah, he's just there. Yeah. Well, no, that's a very good comparison. Right now, there's no mystique, there's no cool factor. There's nothing yep. new about Ray, you know, even though we all respect him, we all mm-hmm. love his work, but yeah, that's exact same thing with Edge slash Adam Copeland. So, but hey, he's just there to make his money, that's fine, whatever. Yep. Um, <laughs> Let's talk about, okay, so let's, let's put a bow on it. We all agree. Does this make you want to watch next week's Dynamite? I think you said no just now already, right? No, no. But I am going to okay. be interested in watching Dynasties. So. It's okay. Your bro is going to watch Dynamite. The go-home episode of Dynamite, I will be there to uh, sort of a, you know get get a feel for it and see if they bounce back from All this right. screw-up. Uh, cl- clearly, this is uh, something that you're doing out of your own accord. Nobody told you to do it. It's no, just no. you interested in AEW Dynamite, right? I am, Yes. <laughs> I'm a man of my word, if anything, right? I said on last week's podcast that if they showed the actual footage, I would watch a month of Dynamite. So I'm going to freaking watch a month of Dynamite. And also, um, it gives me a much fresher take on the product that I've been quote-unquote swanning for the past couple of months. Yeah, it's what, yeah. I've always said this, right? Like, you should even, like, even, for example, Madam Web. Universally hated. Tonight, I'm going to watch Madam Web. Oh I'm, my god, why? Yeah. I, I finally want to understand why people hate it. I keep is talking it, about it. Is it on huh? streaming? Or like, are you going to watch? How are you going to watch uh, it? It's, you know, it's on streaming in certain places. Ah, uh, streaming. Uh, <laughs> I see, I see. Okay. But you know what I mean? Like, I'm like, okay. I'm, I'm finally going to watch it so that I can see if the hate is justified. Got you. Got you. And, and, and see, maybe they are trying certain things that, you know. Like uh, anyway, we'll we'll see. Let let's talk about um Dynasty because there's still the go home episode and then there's Dynasty itself, right? Yeah. And yep. once again, for all intents and purposes, when you look at the card, it's it's another indie show card lah. A lot of dream matches with no build, 
they are great matches if you are just going to uh, the community center to watch a night of wrestling and have no context whatsoever. We talk about how it's AW is an easier watch if you just watch the pay per views, right? Yep, yep, yep. Yep. So like, like look at the card right now. I'm look. I have it right here with me. Like, like mm-hmm. you, we can run through and kind of see what is our hype level for each batch. <laughs> okay. So I don't know which is gonna start first, but we'll just get to it, like Will Osprey versus Brian Danielson. So this one. <sighs> Unfortunately, it's going to be a banger, but it's they are going to do every f up move in the sun. They are going to go all out and do all sorts of crazy shit to each other, which is, for, you know, it's them. For all intents and purposes, right, like I, I, I do still like Brian Danielson's style of wrestling. Mm-hmm. Um, he does... He does do more technical stuff. He does slow things down a bit more. So I am actually curious to see whether will they go full on flippy shit or will actually Will Osprey slow down for Brian Danielson? <sighs> you know, Brian is the guy he will do what he's very nice. He's too nice. Mm. He you know, he will go along with it. Okay, there are certain things that he cannot do versus Will Osprey, but by and large, I think this will be a he will do his, you know, like technical wrestling stuff, then Will Osprey will do his like outrageous, ridiculous stuff, and then Will Ospreay will probably hit the worst finisher ever on Brian Danielson. You cannot he, sell me on Will Ospreay's... Uh, hidden Blade? Hit, is it called the Hidden Blade? I thought that was, Jay, uh, that was lethal. Um, no, hidden, hidden Blade. The, the, the swinging elbow from the back, right? Yeah, yeah. That one yeah. is called well, hidden, hidden Blade. Hidden Blade, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's the worst finisher ever. Yeah. It looks uh, like shit. If, okay, legitimately somebody elbows you in the back of your head, it's supposed yeah. to hurt and look them you know crazy right but i've said this a million times doing strikes rarely work as a finisher rarely work in pro wrestling because it's very hard to fake you're yes. obviously not trying to actually elbow somebody in the back of the head that's why whenever he does it he looks like he goes way over the guy's yes. head it he never looks good through. he follows yeah. through on the head yeah i agree i agree well um you know they try to push will Ospreay as a baby face uh Oh Brian yeah, by, be- by beating a beloved baby face. Exactly. So, so that's the point I'm trying to make, right? So Brian Danielson is technically turned heel for a moment, and then suddenly <sighs> they never explain why he's a good guy now. So uh, we're gonna watch it just because, like you said, it's a dream match, and there are wrestlers that we like. Yeah, not because no, that, of this no, that, story behind it. Yeah, that's it. It's like you know, okay, in the context of like WrestleMania. This yeah. would be a mid card match at WrestleMania. Ooh, there you Don't, go. <laughs> yeah, right? Like, it's not going to be a headliner because there's no emotions involved. Yeah. It's going to be LA Knight and AJ Styles, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, no, that's exactly it, right? On uh, sight. Ju- okay. just, yeah, just with a lot more, like, you know, crazy moves. That's it. Who you, who do you have to win this match? It has to be Will Ospreay. Right? You have, he, he's the new guy, million dollar signing. Why would you put Brian Danielson over? He's the guy leaving. Okay. Will Osprey then? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Young Bucks versus FTR. I have zero interest in this match. I'll be honest with you. I know it's going to be a good match. It's a ladder match. Since when? I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at the card here. It says tournament final ladder match. So I guess it's a ladder match. Okay. Oh, look, um, okay. Look, uh, I wish I could care about who wins this. I think that FTR are going to win this. Just because they want to look like they are not being... Uh, not playing favorites. I feel like FTR are going to win this. From a booking perspective, mm. I think it makes more sense that the Young Bucks win this. To what? Continue their heel like we are EVP run? They have to continue their being the insufferable <sighs> top tag team heels that is being as holy EVPs. Yes, I but, think they can do that. Um, uh, oh God. But here's the thing, right? Like, they have no heat. They literally have no heat. This is gonna be their way of getting hit. Go away hit. <laughs> uh, he, no, they yeah, they have nothing but go away hit, and them winning the tag titles. Uh, okay, fine. I nah, mean, whatever. You know, I, I, my interest level in this match is very low. To be real honest, because CM Punk, and I would love. I I think is what's gonna happen. The crowd will be cheering, chanting CM Punk during this match. Yeah, yeah. A few years ago, this was legitimately a dream match that. AEW could have made happen. It, unfortunately, that it happened during the pandemic. They had a chance to build it up again. Mm. They didn't. And then their all-in match was just anyhow put together last minute. So they have botched this three match, in my opinion. No, nope, yep, no, exactly, 100%. Uh, Julia Hart versus Willow Nightingale. House rules match for the AEW TBS Championship. Let's... I have nothing to say because I don't care. Um, people are trying to say that Julia Hart is like, you know, wow. you, you 
people who are excited about Julia Hart matches are just thirsty to see Julia Hart. I'm sorry, <laughs> but I'm trying to be as real as possible. Nothing about her matches scream exciting to me. Well, I, I am not thirsty for Julia Hart. Uh, the only blonde I've ever been into was Tori Wilson and she was not known for five-star matches as well. Okay, but, sure. But, but Julia Hart has one thing that a lot of AEW wrestlers do not have and I got to acknowledge that. Uh -huh. she has some mystique and some sort of character thanks to her House of Black, you know, yeah. uh, association. So she's but, a presentation character. Yes. So she's Actually, the, one of the only presentations in yeah. if you think about it. If you compare her with Alexa Bliss, I guess that's a good comparison because Alexa Bliss isn't the greatest worker either. Yeah. You know, yeah. she's incredible presentation. Yeah. She's so, incredible to look at. Julia Hart versus Willow Nightingale, again, not very excited for this. Maybe Mercedes Monet might get involved because of the Willow connection. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so is Mercedes going to turn heel? Like, I don't know. They better turn her heel because she is freaking Lannis. boring as a baby face, right? Three weeks, and, bro. Four, three, yeah. four weeks. And she's and, like... And, yeah, and, and Willow Nightingale is actually a very natural baby face. Um, yes. If you pay attention to her matches, she actually has one of the better, you know, baby face uh, slash work, uh, great workers in terms mm. of female. Like, mm. like, she's one of the only female that I would say ha can, can work, can do a great match. Yeah. So, um, I do not know whether it's time for Julia Hart to drop the title, but they, clearly they're pointing towards Mercedes Mori versus Willow Nightingale. So, it's going to be that. Right. Um, I don't know if you saw the promo as well. I forgot to talk about this during the Dynamite thing because I... If <laughs> There was this whole thing where Willow and Edge, uh, Adam Copeland, they, oh, okay, they, okay. They, they set up a match for Dynamite. It's a mixed tag match, right? And I forgot who. It's uh, Brody King? Yeah, Brody King and Julia Hart, is it? Yeah, but yeah. that whole setup was so community theatre. Oh my God. It was, okay, you know what it was? It what? felt to me like Willow was taking too long to get to the point. So Edge just jumped in and oh, got to the no. point. Oh, no. it, you know what I mean? It felt like that. It felt like Willow was like, oh, you know, you challenged me to a match, but um, uh, since we are here together, uh, you, you know, it was that awkward, like, get to the point. And Adam Copeland, it, it sounded like he was halfway just blanked out and he wasn't listening anymore. And he was like, you know what? Let's do a mixed tag. He just got to the point. <laughs> I, it felt like that to me. So I'm like, yikes, that, that looked bad. Because okay. not only... Not only did he not let Willow finish her thought, it's like you knew she was going there already, but he just jumped in and like let's freaking do it. Uh, let's just don't waste time. Let's just go get to the point. Yeah, right? just, so it just it was bad on all points. It was so cringe. I forgot about it. Yeah, you need you need people to guide the youngsters. Um, and clearly maybe he Adam Copeland just a few years ago was working with Roman Reigns and Brian Daniels. <laughs> <laughs> and now he's working with Villain Tigers. So, cut him some slack. Like, he's probably like, what the hell am I doing? Here? Okay, so at uh, Dynasty, it's Adam Copeland, Eddie Kingston, and Mark Briscoe. Oh my god, he tried to come up with a name for the group also. Some chicken, don't know what. Um, Did, did you see this? No, I he, he literally tried to come up with a name for the group and it was so bad. They, chicken I McNuggets? He, I don't know what it was. Uh, I, I need to Google this because it was so bad. But okay, uh, talk to me about Adam Copeland, Eddie Kingston, Mark Briscoe versus House of Black and how excited you are. I need to Google this. Okay. I mean, to be honest, Adam Copeland and uh, Malakai Black should have been a one-on-one -on -one match. Yeah. If that was the match for the TBS uh, TNT Championship and that was on the pay-per-view, that would have been a great... I mean, it wouldn't have been the best draw, but it would have been a draw. People would be curious to see that one-on-one -on -one match. Mm. They should have spent the time from the time Adam Copeland won the TNT Championship to build a one-on-one -on -one feud yep. with Malachi Black because Malachi Black tees appearing uh, after one of his Coke Open matches and, you know, kind of, you know, laid on that challenge. So why didn't they make that the match? Even if they want to have House of Black, you know, be by ringside, yep. uh, threaten to get involved and then they can have Mark Briscoe and Eddie Kingston be the in the corner. Mm. The six-man tag just makes it feel like an episode of Dynamite main event. It does. It really, really right? does. Um, yeah. Yeah, that okay. That promo did not get me excited for this match. I need to okay. Somebody in chat will know, like, and, and please uh, remind us on Discord. But maybe later I'll go and find. I can't find it, but I'll go and find the promo again. I'm sure it's on their YouTube. He comes up with a the really the worst name I've ever heard in my life for that group. And do you, just do you find it? it? No, I did not find it, and it made everybody look bad. And you can tell he 
thought of it on the fly. Yeah, some people... Uh... <laughs> this is a suffering sucker touch promo, bro. Oh, <laughs> dear God. Uh, uh, let's move on. Okay. Tonely, a uh, Tonely. Timeless Tony Storm uh -huh. versus Thunder Rosa, yes. AW Women's World Championship. Mariah May is going to be in this match, so uh, maybe the draw is that there might be a potential for HLA. Like, I don't yeah, know. yeah. That's the thing, right? Like, this match, nothing about Thunder Rosa is being highlighted or featured. I never hear any package about her coming back from her injury, working yeah. her way back up to the main event. It's all Tony Storm making out with Mariah May. Yep. And then like, now you got this other girl from Japan. The Mina girl, right? Like, <laughs> respect, res, respectfully, if Mariah May, Mina and Tony Storm want to do something on OF or, you know, that one, that one, sure, that would be a draw. But in this context, like, no. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, okay, like, I remember when Tony Storm first came out with the whole timeless gimmick. Everyone's, like, gushing about it. Yeah. Is it still as popular? Because I saw it and it was like, oh, okay, like that long, black and white only. Yeah, I mean, I like the production that they use. They always employ her being black and white and the half-half, I think that was cool. Mm. Uh, but yeah, the, it's it's not as hot as it once was because I think they became too idiosyncratic. With, yeah. Is that even a word? <laughs> uh, is, is Mariah May supposed to be some sort of Tony Storm yep. mega fan cosplay? Like she literally dresses like Tony Storm. Yeah. And she's okay. even coming out to her old music. So, oh. uh, yeah, they're playing the whole Trish Stratus, Mickey James angle, but not as... Well, when's the turn? Because, like I said, all I took away from this past Dynamite was Mariah May and this Japanese girl making out. So, they're trying to tease some sort of, like, um, jealousy angle where... Because all this while, Mariah May is trying to catch Tony Storm's attention, but yeah. Tony Storm never lied, right? Yeah. And then now this Mina, this girl from her past in Slater... Make out blah, blah, blah. So now, Tony Storm also wants to win back her fans. So they are having this side feud. But whatever it is, it's not Thunder Rosa versus Tony Storm that is the highlight. That's the problem. Yeah, yeah so therefore, nobody gives a crap about the match because exactly. Thunder Rosa has no bearing on the match whatsoever. Okay, well, there's that. Uh, let's move on. Kazuchika Okada versus Park for the Continental Championship. Wait, so, okay, I'm very confused. Please educate me. Continental Championship was supposed to be an, an amalgamation of three championships, right? Didn't Eddie Kingston lose one of these championships recently? The uh, One of the New Japan ones, IWGP? Well, you're kind of half and half, so apparently, and this is convoluted, so don't blame me for trying to explain it. Oh, God. The whole Continental Classic was a tournament, and the winner will be awarded the Continental Championship. So it's a made-up championship, lah. It Correct. is not a combination of those three titles. Those three titles still exist separately. Separate. So, Correct. so basically, this is a bullshit belt, lah. This is another belt. And so when they became a tri when he Eddie Kingston became a triple crown winner was because he really had the New Japan Strong Championship Correct. and they, he really had the Ring of Honor Championship, right? Yes, yes. So then when he won the tournament, he was awarded this new belt. Yeah, but so, it so is not a combination of those three belts. It's no. just you have a new belt. Yes, yes, and then. They're trying to explain it, saying that next year's Continental Classic or this year's Continental Classic, Eddie Kingston will be, even though he's a champion, he's really the Continental Champion, he will still have to enter the tournament and for him to... But so he's not the champion, why? Right? Okada is the champion. He lost the Continental Championship oh, yeah, title yeah, yeah. to yeah. Okada. I'm not saying that he's the champion. But I'm saying that whoever is the Continental Champion will we, we have to enter the tournament. He's like a guaranteed spot in the tournament sure. in the future. So and Okada then, yeah. is going to be in the tournament. Correct. So, so is Eddie being the winner of the actual tournament going to be in the tournament as well? Well, they only okay. said the, only the continental existing continental champion, champion will so, be okay. there. Yeah. This thing is already way too convoluted. The exactly. Fact that we, nobody's going to understand it. It just makes zero sense. He just wanted to create a new freaking title. You got continental, you got international, you got world, you got AEW, TBS, you got TNT, you got tag team, you got RO. That's the other thing. I saw um, a promo by the ROH trios. Um, the bang bang gang, gang bang bang, whatever the hell. Okay. Right. The gang bang gang. Uh, wait. The bang anyway, bang gang. The gang bang gang. Okay. So the gang bang <laughs> gang. Like again, this is the same thing we talked about. Like how many years ago? It's like there's way too many champions there to a point where none of these championships mean anything. Bro, this time last year, FTR and the Gin and Juice, you know, Juice Robinson. Oh, yeah, they had a banger, right? They had great matches on Collision. <laughs> oh, yeah, the CM Punk show, supposedly. Yeah, yeah. And 
Uh, it's just it's just a shame. So like, okay, Okada beats Eddie Kingston for this Continental Championship, whatever. Mm. I thought the match was shit, right? Yeah. Uh, did Okada recently had a match with some young boy, beat the piss out of him, which was what he yeah. should have been doing. He was a nobody, la, basically. Yeah, job but work. to be honest, Okada just looked like an average guy. Like, they, are, they keep trying to sell me on him being... And once again, I've watched New Japan before. I remember him being like the guy, the ace, right? Big deal, yeah. Physically, he's... Physically and visually, he's way past that. Like, I cannot take him as the best wrestler ever when you have all these other people's not just looking good, but performing incredible. Like, the, the only thing Okada does very well is that dropkick right now. That's it. The, the crazy thing is, right, even when we talk about Tanahashi, right, in mm. for some reason, New Japan could present their stars as a bigger deal in the New Japan environment than in yeah. AEW because I remember when John Moxley, you know, had a match in mm. New Japan, looked like a big deal. Okada come out, big deal. Will Ospreay come out, big deal. Tan uh, Tanahashi, all big deal. It's the presentation, bro. It's really AEW doesn't know how to present yeah. their stars. We've said this so many times. Same thing. Uh, Mercedes Monet, Will Ospreay, and now Okada as well million dollar signing and he's going to fight Park, which is, you know, fine. Park is probably going to flip like shit for him to make everything yeah. he does look good. Yeah. Honestly, Park looks more of an athlete than <laughs> Okada at this yeah. point. But we all know what's Park's problem, right? Yeah, he he's appeared, never there. He's he never there. Three weeks and then he disappeared, yeah. Yeah, so I wouldn't be surprised if Okada versus Lance Archer next. So just give him guys to beat. Yeah, build him up, lah. That's fine. If you want to raise up the profile of the Continental Championship, sure. You know, mm. I wish they made it more clear why is each championship special, right? Mm. If you're gonna make w uh, the the AEW World Heavyweight Championship the top championship, the TNT Championship maybe like the so-called TV title where they can defend it regularly, that's mm. fine. They can make their international championship something that they can defend in like you know other promotion because it's an international championship. Yeah. That's fine. Continental Championship can be uh, contested by all the international wrestlers or like only defended in like, you know, Japanese rule. Yeah. I don't know. But make it special because now there's nothing special about each no. belt other than no. the names. And, and the worst part about it is the most convoluted thing because you won it in a tournament, like Eddie, you won it in a tournament, but you yeah. can lose it in a regular match. Huh? So, I, it, it makes no sense. And then as the champion, when the tournament comes around again, you have to be a part of the tournament. Like, what the f it's like, equivalent to you win the money in the bank, right? And then you have mm. to defend the money in the bank in a regular title yeah. match. Like, it, what? It makes zero sense whatsoever. Like, isn't the whole point of this also like Continental Classic is supposed to be like a World Cup thing where it got brackets, blah, blah, that kind of thing. Right? Yeah. So you're telling me that, let's say France wins the World Cup. And then uh, one year later, England challenges France for the World Cup. Can't lie there. This is exactly and, what has happened with the Continental Championship. Yeah, and then when France lose to England, suddenly England is the world champion? Yeah, <laughs> that makes no fucking sense whatsoever. Uh, so like, uh, once again, you know, who cares? As somebody who's super hyper fixated in fantasy booking, you would think that he would try to make more sense out of these things, but no. Yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't make sense. Uh, I don't care about this match. I'm sorry to say. And Nothing... I love and I love Okada and, and it's so sad for us to like sit here and say like, oh, we don't care about Okada's matches. No, I, yeah, it's all a presentation thing, right? When he beat up the jobber and then um, the young bucks came out, the crowd was dead. Exactly. Yeah. Im imagine if he had signed with WWE with all the presentation, yeah. with all the form and circumstance, mm. Even him being able to cut Japanese problems with subtitles. Now we see Yosuke doing it. Yeah, <laughs> we see yeah. Asuka it would, doing it, right? Yeah. Bro, that dream match with Shinsuke Nakamura, bro. Oh. There, see, there's the presentation thing, but okay, once again, we go back to, they don't want to work that schedule. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's yeah. just, don't come and say, oh yeah, you know, AEW has this talent, that talent, this talent. So what? They're being completely wasted. And they're yes, not being yeah. presented. So they, it is They need what it to is. make themselves into a star. I tell you, if... If they can bring in casual fans to watch their show, mm. then you know AEW has like, you know, elevated themselves. If not, they're, still, they're just going to be like a, a ROH or, yeah. you know, just, just a promotion that wrestling fans know, but they're not going to be the wrestling promotion. Yeah. But, you know, that is, once again, it's not their business. Their business is putting on five-star matches for a quarter of the crowd. Let's move on to the international... Here we go, another championship, international championship, Roderick Strong versus Kyle O'Reilly. Okay, mm. I haven't been following the previous week's and this week's Dynamite, I don't think they had any um, build-up. So maybe they've yeah. been building this up on Collision, so I've missed it. Tell me yeah. why they're fighting each other. I thought I thought Kyle O'Reilly came back and then they friend-friend. 
Well, so if since you said you missed collision, I just saw the results this morning that mm. um apparently uh Roderick Strong, Roderick Strong mm. with his uh, Undisputed Kingdom has turned on Carl O'Reilly. So they're gonna tell that story of you know Carl O'Reilly say you know he come back he's trying to like I don't know whether should I be friends with Roderick Strong or not. Roderick Strong, but he friend, friend, friend. him. Uh... But back then he's like oh you will never you are nothing without me. Typical lah, the usual yeah. lah. Okay. I have no doubt that this will be a banger of a match. Yeah. But in terms, O'Reilly, yeah. in terms of me wanting to watch this match, I'm like, I might as well go back and watch NXT. Yes. If the, if this was 2019, yeah. you would have watched the shit out of this match. <laughs> yeah, no, because there was a story. But this yeah. has been done again and again. And then now they're trying to... Uh, I, it'll, it'll be a great match once again. If you watch yeah. this as a standalone, it's probably going to be a good match. It must break your heart to see your favorite undisputed era, era, just... era and uh, Chris Jericho. <laughs> oh, it does. It does. No, it, see, that's the thing. I don't know why people think that I'm like, oh, I hate on these guys. I absolutely do not. You know, like I yeah. want to see them succeed, but they are not in a place where they are going to succeed. They are in a place where they will make money, and it's a shame, right? Because yeah. we all know what they can do. Yeah. But once again, I have to tar it back and always think about. If they want to do this where they can make good living, have a shorter, um, you know, like a lighter work schedule, more yep. power to them. Yep. But I just don't know how long this dream is going to last before mm-hmm. Daddy Khan says, stop it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, well, that, so I, until then, we have these kind of matches. Lah. Yeah, I guess. Uh, let's talk about the main event. Samoa Joe, Swerve Strickland. Right, mm-hmm. uh, Swerve Strickland is right now at his. I don't know if it's the peak of his popularity, but he's them over Yeah, yep. right now. And Samoa Joe is over, but in a even though he's a heel, he's like the we respect you over. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. People will still cheer Joe. If nothing else, they have a decent main event scene. Like we said yeah. we had. They have two stars who are over connected with the crowd. Uh, you know, so Strickland has organically yeah. become this top guy from his run. But once again, like you brought up earlier. Even though this is their main event or their main event world championship title, if you compare it in the context of all of wrestling, this yeah. is an upper mid card match at best. This will be the opening match at WrestleMania, la. like you know, they, they, this bro, will be. Bro, I wouldn't even go that far, bro. I would put this in the middle of WrestleMania. I would this... rather watch Seth versus Drew. Over this is this. the this is the ECW championship when it was in WWE. <laughs> yes. You know when. <laughs> Kane versus Chavo Guerrero, <laughs> ten seconds. Uh, Bobby Lashley versus uh, whoever. Yeah, yeah. Oh I god. I, and I, I hate saying that because we all know that Samoa Joe is one of those guys never got the respect he deserved in WWE, right? Yeah, yeah. I love that AEW gave him a world title, make him relevant again, make him a mm. top star again. I mean, I have nothing against that. Uh, so strictly, like I said, you know, if nothing else, I know Hangman Page has his issues, but his feud with Hangman Page elevated him to become a top star. If I never saw Hangman Page again on my screen, I would not complain. But anyway, go on. <laughs> yeah, so what I'm saying is like, Swerve needs to win. Yeah. And whether the next person that's going to win, whether it's going to be Will Ospreay or whether it's going to be MJF, whatever it is, I think Swerve being the way Swerve is needs to be the guy that, you know, carries the company for the foreseeable future for now. Agree. Uh, but I don't want MJF to be the guy because I don't want MJF to resign. And we've said this before. He's too smart to have resigned at AEW. He must know that this is a sinking ship. He must. I think, I think he has time. too much talent to know to not know. And he's friends with Cody. He's friends with CM Punk. Bro, he have given five years of his career to AEW. I think yeah. he has built enough of a hype. Mm. Can you Bro. imagine Cody Rhodes as the world champion and then suddenly his surprise opponent is freaking MJF? Royalty free music, ah. Uh? WWE can use that song, ah. Uh? Oh yeah, you're right. Oh my god, dude. Maybe he shows up in France. I don't know. Um, but yeah, see? Uh, we're still talking about WWE even though we are previewing AEW. Um, yeah, this so is the most AEW content we've given in a podcast for a while. <laughs> because I actually watched the damn show. And, Finally. You know? yeah. Okay, so my promise extends to Dynamite. Okay. Doesn't extend to Dynasty. <laughs> Don't worry, bro. I will, I, I will pick up the slack. Bro, it's, slack. it's 40 bucks. It's 40 bucks, bro. Who say you need to watch it <clears throat> we only do things the right way here, so it's $40, oh, okay. you know? Like, times are tough, man. Like Yeah, I mean, hey, if, <laughs> if you want to help us and fund our cause, feel free to be part of our Patreon. 
you know, we love the people in the picture. They are the one that's helping to keep these bills going, uh, and probably they are the one that is funding our viewing habits for AEW. Yeah, yeah. G- gift me the <laughs> pay per view of uh, uh, Dynamite. Actually, I mean not Dynamite, uh, Dynasty. But mm. okay, so I mean, I'll I'll most likely catch it since I'm involved. I'm in the rabbit hole. I'll yeah, give yeah. it a watch, and we'll oh. see. It. We'll. Uh, Review it next week, like when we do the podcast. Hopefully, I'm proud. I'm proud of you. Yeah, I'm very. I proud. try. I try. Like you said, like you know, I'm trying to be as objective as possible right now. Watching Dynamite, um, it is what it is. I feel like there's one more thing I wanted to mention, but I forgot what it was. Uh, was it SPW? SPW. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna talk about SPW real quick, but it, no, it has something to do with AEW. And eh, never Probably doesn't matter. <laughs> All right. Okay. You know what? You know what? Let, let, let's take a step back. Uh, let's pivot and talk about our last thing for this episode. This episode of the podcast. Thank you guys mm. for staying the two hours. Uh, and also you know. thank you to our sponsors, Mirage Advisory. We love you guys. The best there is, the best there was, the best there ever will be. Guys, dro- do us a favor. Go to their Instagram page and drop them a follow. They're wrestling fans. They're supporting what we do. So hey. Mm-hmm. Help us support them also, lah. Yeah, follow them on their Instagram. They are our season seven sponsors. Uh, and if you know they get more followers through us, yep. they will stick around until the end of the season and be part of our Kick to the Gut Awards as well. So let's go. Be sure, be sure to give them your likes and follows. Yeah. Talking about the Kick to the Gut Awards. Okay, so Kick to the Gut Awards. Obviously, we are looking at all the Singapore wrestlers, what they've been doing throughout the year, and based mm-hmm. on you know not just our reviews of what they are doing, but also the reviews of the community. You know, mm-hmm. so if you mm-hmm. want to have your say, hey, go check out our Patreon. Right, links are all in the description. Yes, and speaking of our uh, you know Kick to the Gut Awards, uh, before we quickly talk about SPW, I wanted to uh, give your attention to a post that I put out on our Patreon mm. because you know we have done like about two months worth of shows from yes. Grapple Mac and SPW, and I have compiled and averaged out some of the star ratings. Oh, and I want to present to you, bro. This is a bit of a tease for those oh. of you who are not on our Patreon. You want to be involved? I am doing a monthly ranking of the top five performers as Singapore wrestlers for each month. Right? Exciting. Okay, come. So, so one of the posts that I put out was mm. the kick to the gut top five wrestlers in the month of March. Okay, okay. Are uh, you going okay? to reveal who they are? Yes, I am going to reveal who they are. So I think I think in terms of the star ratings we, 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 which we do every time we go to a show, mm. those are only for the patrons' eyes only. But I feel I think it's fair that, you know, we we'll give you guys a bit of a tease, right? Yep, so, sure. at, at the very least, you guys can kind of have some context how each wrestler is performing and who is impressing us at okay. this moment, right? Okay. Okay. Number five, in terms of the top five monthly rankings for March, we have, drum roll, please. <laughs> Prabhu from oh. Showtime Inc. Grapple yes. Max. Okay, this is what I wrote. This is what I wrote in uh in on Patreon. Um... Wait, let me see. What did I write? <laughs> I to pull it out. Okay. You forgot what you wrote, bro. Yeah, okay. Showtime Inc. Enforcer Prabhu rounds off the list thanks to his incredible connection with the audience mm. and improving heel work, right? All right, nice. Yeah, so he has gotten four, four stars, uh, 3.5, 3.5. So he is in a upper echelon, right? So that's number five. Mm. Number four. <laughs> the first entrant from SPW. Oh, the statement, Andrew uh, Tang. Yeah. Yes. The statement has gotten four stars for his uh uh, uh performance against Chris Vice. Mm. Oh no, Chris Z. Is it Chris Vice? Yeah, Chris Vice. Vice. Chris Vice. Yes. From uh when when SPW had their event last month, this is what I wrote. The statement's valiant performance against Chris Vice and shocking Hilton makes him an intriguing addition to the list. Right. Okay. Just to be clear, we are basing the list on match quality, character popularity, how popular they are, and prestige. So if you are competing in the main events, most likely you'll end up at the top of the list, right? Yeah, higher, oh. higher rankings. Okay, yeah. here we go. Number three. Number three. <laughs> we have End Boss Gregory. Ah. Uh, so End Boss, our first 4.5 star ranked wrestler for his performance on the last show. Okay. This is what I wrote about him. And Boss Gregory has been a steady veteran presence performing double duty at Grapple Max Amplify, the last show, and putting on a brilliant performance in the main event, which was the six-pack challenge, right? Mm. Reminding everyone why the OG shouldn't be underestimated. Nice. Okay, number two. 
Speaking of the main event of Grapple Max Amplify, uh-huh. we have the new number one contender oh? for the Grapple Max Openweight Championship. Okay, okay. SPD. SPD, my boy. Yeah, our, uh, you know, your favorite guy. My, favorite my, my, favorite. my ratings pushed him up lah. Yes, your rating has pushed him out, you know. <laughs> not just you, bro. People from our Patreon community has been okay. giving him high marks, especially for his performance. Mm. Not just from Amplify, Battle in the Barracks, and also yeah. Cosby Jam. This is what I wrote. Uh, before, SP- you, be- before you jump into it, I just very quickly want to mention too, it's going to be interesting to see how he pivots because mm. he's a lot of the ratings is based on what he was as a heel. Yeah. But now, now after the latest Amplify, he's on the other side of the coin. So let's see how he... Um, you know, how he takes his character work. I'm very interested to see that. Go ahead, sorry. No worries. Yeah, I'm also interested as well because this is what I wrote. SPD is the surprise entry on the list for outlasting five other contenders and earning a future shot at the Grapple Wax Open Weight Championship. But, mm. you know, given his recent ousting from Shota Ing, it'll be interesting to see how he pivots and yes. becomes a baby face. So, there you go. Here we go. Number one, currently leading the pack. Are you interested in this, bro? Of course I am. Okay, okay, here you go. Oh, did you want did you want to keep it a secret? No, no, no. I, I'm gonna reveal it right now. Okay, I'm gonna okay. reveal it right now, okay? In terms of match quality, okay. the rest of it, the best match quality from this past month. I think I know of, who. I think I know terms, who. In terms of prestige, <laughs> who, who had a, a championship defense and sure. re- uh, successfully retained. Mm. In terms of popularity one of the most popular wrestlers in his promotion uh-huh. in terms of character his promo might not be there but he has everything else what do you think who do you think who do you think you, you said you, you had someone in your in your mind yeah I had someone in my mind then when you said promo not there I'm like eh? do uh-huh. I have the wrong person okay, okay. Give, give your thoughts first I my, my okay my guess would have been Big Dave ah uh, Big Dave just barely made the top five just barely oh, miss the top five. Miss, right, right, right. Okay, so is you'll it be Eden surprised. Rex? It is mm. Eden Rex. Okay, here, 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 here's what I wrote about Eden Rex. Right, Eden Rex, Eden Rex tops the month of March by retaining his SPW Southeast Asian Championship against a frightening challenger in Carlo Cannon. Oh, yep, it was a great match. He got actually the highest rank, rating in terms of all of SPW's wrestlers. Mm-hmm. So he wins based on prestige because of being on the main event. He yep. wins in terms of the match quality, mm. uh, popularity, most over worker in the audience for SPW, which is very interesting because it took a while for him, for people to get behind him as a champion, right? Yep. But now he's easily the most over guy. And yeah, his character might not be there, but the other three metrics pull him way up. He's one of those guy. he's one of those guys, right? You really appreciate him when you watch him work. Yes. And it'll be interesting to see him because at uh, the next, not the upcoming one, but the next event, SPW Ignition, he's actually going up against the recently heel uh, Andrew Tang, the statement. Who yes, is one correct. of you know, he's their would you say Singapore's top heel at this point? I mean, it's been a while because he's been like a tweener for a long time. Yep. But this is going to be like the draw for SPW going forward, the, the big rivalry going forward. So, mm. very interesting. We've got two of the guys in the top five and they're going to be wrestling each other in SPW's next big event, right? My my hope is that um the statement brings something out in terms of his character work with mm. respects to Aiden Rex. Yeah, you know? I, I agree. I agree. Uh, and, you know, Grapple Max has had more, match, uh, more events and more matches. So, technically... Mm. While the SPW wrestlers are part of this list, they haven't officially qualified yep. for the overall Singapore Top 20 because they need to have minimum of three matches that has Correct. been viewed by either one of us or our Patreon members. So, but that will be that's fine. It's only April, so you know. Yeah, that's gonna change because SPW is gonna have a show actually this week, right? Uh, correct. So interestingly enough, right? And I, we we were considering this as canon, are we? Mm. Because we? it's uh, it's an interesting what they're doing. They're doing an event at Balmoral Plaza, April nineteenth, mm. seven thirty p.m. Um, right. It's called Clash at the Club. So mm. it is pro wrestling in a samtula, basically, <laughs> for lack of a better uh, term. Yes, I, and I haven't stepped into samtula since uh, my NS days. So <laughs> yeah, okay. So they are doing a wrestling event at a Thai club. Yes, essentially that this that is a it, right. So, so there's no ring. Yeah, it's gonna be like a. Uh, you know, like Grapple Max had their better the barracks where it was gonna be like a match. So, so but, I but wonder. Is, yeah. The question is, do will they have mats? Or they are will, they gonna right? fight at the club? <laughs> Cannot be right. They're like slamming each other on the dance floor. Oh, that'd be hilarious. Uh, 
Well, you know what? If you are a Patreon member and you are actually interested in catching this, mm. if you can help review because I don't think I'm going to be there because I'm going to be... <laughs> I'm a good boy and I'm going to be visiting for Hari Raya. So, uh, uh, yeah. Okay, so, I am sure we'll find somebody to go check this out. Yeah, if somebody can check it out on our behalf and do the ratings for us, then we'll include this or whoever or the, uh, whichever or the SPW wrestlers is involved to be part of our SPW ranking, mm. SCW 20. If not, we will consider the SPW Ignition, the next big event. Yeah. Saleh, Saleh, where's our intern? Hey, hey Saleh, you want to go uh, tidy Shamsky? school right? for work, for project? It's for First work. time, is this he young boy? Hey, don't don't like, you know, corrupt him. Like. He young boy. Uh, or... He big boy, 25 years old already. Think okay, can... well, we'll take a look at some of the matches right now, right? So we have The Statement and Alexis Lee versus hmm. Jack and Cheese. Ooh. Okay, so it's going <laughs> to be a mixed tag plus a all-male tag team. Uh yes, so I mean, well, I mean, Alexis is part of the boys, lah. You know, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And and when you line up against someone like Cheese, because you have the two horses and you have the two more agile performers, yeah. wrestlers yeah. there, so it yeah. kind of makes sense, right? But if there's no ring, right, is this gonna be like you know, um, a, all... she, uh, a bar fight, lah? <laughs> yeah, it's essentially gonna be a bar fight, right? Is this is, yeah. is going to be tornado tag or an actual tag team match? That's my question. I'm very curious. I think, you know, this could be a reason for people to check out the event to mm. see how they're actually going to pull this off and execute this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. I, like, I can't imagine Jack facing off against Alexis Lee. Like, that mismatch is hilarious. Yeah, I agree. I you agree. know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so, okay. We have that match. Then we also have for the SPW Southeast Asian Championship... Uh-huh. Aiden Rex versus Bryson Blade. Yes. Yes. So this is gonna be interesting because Bryson Blade has is not known as a main event guy in yeah. SPW. So, so is this... he recently was quote unquote suspended for his actions, right? Yeah. And I'm... he was standing keep out of a tech team with the 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 CK Vin, remember? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean he, um he recently like hooked up with CK Vin after he turned his back on Kyle, right? Yes, correct. Correct. So I wonder, is there going to be any social media content trying to tell a story of why he's getting a match? Mm. And it's for the title, no less. Yeah. Right? I mean, to me, it's like, this is Aiden Rex side quest. He's yeah. going to go in there, he's going to beat Bryson. Obviously, Bryson is going to have a thing or two to say about that. But, you know, to me, this looks like a side quest. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, Yeah. So I, I mean, come on, Aiden Rex is still the champ. And I think he got a big match with Statement. I don't think he's gonna drop the belt. Also, <laughs> it's a some tweet, right? It's some tweet. No. Uh, and what is he gonna tweet. like fly off of? Is he gonna moonsault off the bar? <laughs> Probably from the chandelier or the, the stripper pole. Is there a stripper pole there? I what? No. I'm... There are no strip clubs in Singapore. What are you talking about? This is Singapore, okay? It's just uh, a disco, ni. I see. So they, he might jump from the disco ball, lah, Basically. <laughs> okay. Can. <laughs> okay. Bro, so we, yes. we need to send you. You need to go just just no, for no. your education, bro. It's, uh, Mr. Young, you, I think you're more experienced. I think it's, I, uh, I'll, just take, I'll just take your word for it, okay? Uh, no. no. The only okay. some tunes I've ever been to are in Bangkok itself, but that's a different story altogether. Wow. That one really have out only. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Anyways. Let's talk about Mason versus Dharma versus C. Kevin. Triple threat. Ah, uh, yes. Featuring one of, our, uh, one of our boys who threatened to burn down the studio. Yes, uh, we, one boy threatened to burn out studio. One boy call us, uh, Bert and Ernie. Ernie, Bert and Ernie, and, and then the destroy other guy okay. can just de- destroy us any day. I, know? I, th- I think we know who we are supporting in this one, bro. <laughs> By default, <laughs> come on, bro. Da, Dharma, destroy, please. yeah, destroy, yeah, destroy <laughs> them, please, destroy them, please. I, I want to see him do a double choke on both of them through the some table. Okay, what the fuck? <laughs> hey, okay. they cannot destroy the club before the club starts. Okay. I, I do not know. I do not know. Okay, anyway. Yeah, so it's going to be like a very relatively light card. So I think it's more of like a nice collaboration, right? Yeah. So these are the three matches that have been advertised on SPW's Instagram page. There may be more. I don't know if I'm missing something. Yeah, yeah. Again, if you're going to the show, drop us a DM, you know, mm. whether you're on our, our Patreon or whether you are from our Discord. Uh, you know, we'll see whether we can hook you up if it's possible. If not, you know, let us know how it went. And mm. we will review the show according to your ratings. Oh, by if, the way, I'm looking at their promo video right now, right? Bryson, there is a promo video. Yeah, Bryson's nickname is the Edge Lord. Wow. What? Do okay. You mean? And uh, the the Dark Force is this. Who who's Dark Force is whose name? Who do you think? The Mason? No. No Dharma. Dharma. 
Dharma is the dark force. I thought Destroyer is already a nickname. Now got extras, yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm looking at it right now. And maybe I'm, it's like a it. evolved version of a Destroyer Dharma, I guess. Okay, okay. Let, let me see it again just to make sure it's correct. Okay, match one, triple threat match. Chang, 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 chang. The Dark Force, Destroyer Dharma versus Mason versus so Straight it, Savage so CKB. It's, it's legit, lah. <laughs> yeah, he is the Dark Force. All right, good for him. Good for him. Okay. Okay, yes. so. No, I love that poster. It says, anything goes, no ring, real deal. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So they are just going to fight at the club, which will be very interesting to see. Of course, their big, uh, their next event is uh, SPW Ignition. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What, eh? The, it says at the Futsing Association building, is this different from the Fu Chao Association building? Yes, it's no longer the same one. So I'm, I'm wondering oh. whether... You know, the, whether it's going to be the same setup, whether it's going to be a bigger, smaller capacity, there's only one way to find out. Which yeah, that, that's the, the one where Aiden Rex is going to face off against his um, statement. But we'll talk about that in, on a different episode. Lah. So there you go. That's Clash at the Club. Uh, if you're going to go down, let us know. Slip into our DMs and, uh, you know, we'll see. L- like, we'll see. Yes, for sure, for sure. I'm excited because, you know, uh, always fun to go back and watch local wrestling. Mm. I know Grapple Max also have another uh, uh, big show at the end of this month in April. So there'll be some local wrestling to catch and review and maybe some uh, guests to appear on our show soon. Absolutely. In the meantime, though, as always, we say thank you so much for hanging out with us um, on a Tuesday, even though we're recording this on a Sunday. Uh, Any closing thoughts on anything we've discussed today? Well, you know... um, even though this is pre-recorded, I'm pretty sure I'll probably be creeping around on the chat, you know, engaging with you guys. Wrestling is fun. Wrestling is back. Uh, regardless whether it's the good or bad, we'll always be here to kind of give you our thoughts, yeah? Can I very quickly just appreciate the ratchetness of AEW? Because it, <laughs> if anything, it has given us so much, quote-unquote, content, right? From everything that's good to everything that's bad. It's a huge wide gamut, right? It is a literally a great time to be a wrestling fan. Because yeah. even though what they are doing is shooting themselves in the foot, AEW that is, <laughs> at least it's something for us to talk about. And yeah. to see it play out in real time, once again, I do not wish ill things upon them. Mm-hmm. But to see this going down the road, like, will Tony Khan finally wake up his idea? You know, like, you know, when you have a friend and you see them spiraling out of control, they are mm. trying to date people who are completely wrong for them or they're oh, doing stupid God. shit. And then you keep trying to tell them, but then they, like, don't want to listen. In, in yeah. a way, you feel bad, but also you're like, shit, let's see how far he goes with this. <laughs> do we, have you ever had that friend? Of course, bro. Um, maybe I might have been that, that guy also. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, he, hey, what if idiot don't want to listen to our advice, but you're like, I'm, I'm still interested in his, his uh, bullshit. No, you, you know, know what? That, yeah, it's, it's, it's fine. You know, if you, you live through the attitude era, right? So you've seen everything happen in real time. Yeah. We are in the middle of an era right now. So I'm curious to see what how everything goes down in real time. And bro, can you imagine? Netflix, Tony Khan faces... I don't know, Logan Paul in a match or something. I don't know. Oh, might... Why? Why? No. Um, I'm waiting for the Dark Side of the Ring AEW episode in about 10 years' time. You know you know when it's really down the drain? When? When Tony Khan starts becoming a character on the show. Oh, you just God. wait. You just wait. Oh, no. Anyway, you just wait. Okay. with that lovely thought in mind, we are going to say thank you so much for watching the show. As always, Discord link in the description. Patreon link also in the description. Thank you so very much for our patrons for keeping the lights on. If you would like to support our content, hey, consider being a Patreon. Uh, we want to shout out to our sponsors, Mirage Advisory as well. Once again, please drop them a follow. Uh, help us as they've, or help them as they've helped us right here on the podcast. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And you know what? Wrestling is back. We are back to our regular scheduled programming. See you guys every Tuesday, 12 p.m. Whether it's live or on demand, we'll always be here. Yeah? In the meantime, it is Mr. Young. And it's for in the building. Have a great week. Oh, yeah.